Hello, everyone. My name is Jan Welch, and welcome to episode 21 of the Then and Now Blading podcast. My guest today is Nick Lomax, and Nick is a longtime pro for USD. He's one of the few skaters who's had both a pro aggressive skate and a pro urban skate. And I'm really excited to talk to Nick. The last time I saw him was when I was in Barcelona about five years ago with my friend Jared. So anyway, this is going to be the very first live interview I'm doing for the Dun & Blading podcast. So I'm excited to have Nick on here. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure and hit the like button, subscribe to his channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell icon to be notified of all new uploads. I'm going to go ahead and bring Nick into the chat right now. If you have any questions in the live chat, we will be answering those towards the end of the show. All right, Hi. Nick, welcome What's to the up, show. Man? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So we had a few audio issues in the beginning with how the windows are going to work. So we'll have mainly just side-by-side -side windows in today's interview. Now, Nick, you are currently in Bayreuth with Matthias at PowerSlide. And are you in the PowerSlide right. office right now with all the skates behind you? There we go. I put them all correct so you can see the two skates there, the main ones, mine and Mary's. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the Mary there. one is really cool. I know I just mentioned that you and that you have had two pro skates, well, in two different disciplines. So you've had aggressive pro skates, which you've had several of, and then you've had a pro zoom from PowerSlide. And yeah. I see Mary also has a pro urban skate. Are you the two only skaters who've had both a pro aggressive and a pro urban skate? Oh, I'm not too sure, bro. Um, could be. Could be the one. Yeah, I think so. I don't think there's many other aggressive skaters that also have a, a free skate either. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's not even a lot of free skate pro skates in general. I thought you would know more than me. <laughs> I, you know, hey, it's 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 hard to keep up with everything in roller wedding. There's always so much happening. Let's just now, stay with just let's just say we are. We're the first people to have one. I believe you are. Yeah. As far oh, as hey. I know. Setting records. <laughs> oh, Kevin Chow says Greg Mizoran. How do you suppose say his last name? Mizoyan. Mizoyan. He's had a pro skate from Rollblade. Oh, true. But I'm not sure he had an aggressive one though. Yeah, I don't I don't remember him having an aggressive skate. Kevin Chow straight away in there, eh? <laughs> yeah, Kevin Chow. Kevin Chow says he misses you. Uh, he told me yesterday he misses you. He misses the miss He's a good lad. He's a good <laughs> lad. What's up, Kevin? And Kevin's who I was with when uh, we I ran into you in Barcelona five years yeah. ago or so at the beach, and we skated around a little bit. Now, I want to get back to why are you in Germany right now? What are you doing at Power Slide? What brought you there? Well, um, Basically, long story short, I got injured. I don't know if you've all seen that on my uh, YouTube account with my vlogs, but um, I have a torn meniscus. And uh, I went home just to like, I went back to England just to chill and like get some downtime and just like relax, you know, not skate. Didn't take skates home this time. So I just kind of sat around doing nothing. And then I figured out that like it's about time to do some work now. And because I can't skate, I can't really do any work i can't make videos and stuff like that so i decided to just come to power slide and touch base and uh, hang out with the team you know give give things a push and make some like different kind of videos because i can't skate so like speaking specs and stuff like that a bit of fitness and fitness is really good right now it's, it's helping me a lot it's helping me move my knee and stuff like that and plus i don't really come here that often you know i i kind of like i do my work and right. I email at the end of the month for my invoice. So it's nice to just come and like, you know, see what everyone's up to and feel part of the team. And who else of the team is there right now? Uh wow, well the team for power slides huge. Um, but there's 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 not many other pros here right now. There's just me okay. and there's an Olympian called Felix. Oh god, I can't remember his last name. It's a hard one to pronounce, but yeah, it's like re it starts with an R, it's like R I J N E N or something. Hard to pronounce for me, but uh he, he's a legend, man, really cool guy. So it's really nice to hang out with him. Like he's an Olympian, man. His legs are like this. I was skating with him, skating by the side of him, and I was like, Oh, you know, that's how a skater's legs should look like. I'm so skinny, so 
yeah, it's been pretty cool to hang out with him. Two completely different worlds. And um, when I met him here at Power Slide, he was like, oh, it's you. And, you know, because we've we've heard each other's names in emails for like 15 years or something like that, because we've been on the same team. But we've just never met or like messaged each other, you know, because we're in completely different disciplines of skating. So it's nice right. to meet him and uh, just hang out and skate. Really yeah, cool. That's really cool. You know, I've been following him and then Bart Swings, obviously, is like yeah. also a you know massive skater for Power Slide, yeah. gold medal at the Olympics. I don't yeah, know man. if you saw that he had uh, a sports centrum dedicated to him in Belgium and it has like a skate park and like skatable features outside of it. Really? Have you seen that? No. It's really cool. Yeah, you should check it out. Um, it's the yeah. Bart Swings uh, like sports center and it's like has all sorts of skating stuff and speed skating and just a gym and everything it's really cool yeah. swim center really? uh i didn't know that so for usd you've been skating for usd for 17 years which is quite a long time and the only other person i can think of that's been skating for maybe as long as like richie eisler true yeah he definitely so would you two be the longest two riders on usd i guess so yeah yeah because we're still sponsored right now so yeah, yeah. i think yeah because and, I, yeah, Richie was. Yeah, Richie was on the team. Actually, was he on the team? I don't. I don't actually know about Richie's how long he's been on the team, but yeah, he's definitely been there a very, very long time, like me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And through those years, you've had a variety of different pro skates and pro products through Power Slide. What was your very first pro product you had with your name on it? Um, I think it might have been a wheel. It might have been one of the first undercover wheels. But then the first pro skate was a realm. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And that was kind of uh looking back at the realm was definitely a bit funky looking skate. Mm. Uh yeah, I mean as soon as as happy as I was to get my first pro skate, I didn't really skate it too much, you know, because it, it wasn't the best skate, obviously. So but I was I mean, I'm not like I'm not being like, you know, oh, I'm gutted I got a pro skate. It was really cool, man. Right, so right. Really happy at the time, yeah. But it was a bit hard to skate. And yeah, as soon as as soon as I could get my hands on a throne, that's what I did. So you had a pro throne too. Yeah, I've had and, two pro thrones, I think. And yeah. then you obviously now you've had several of the um the Aeons. Have you had any other pro skates in between that on the aggressive side of things? Um no, so I've had a realm. Um, a couple of thrones and then the aeons yeah that's it and what's your favorite what's your favorite skate of your pro skate you've had aeons favorite skate of all skates to be honest uh -huh. yeah and i see you also skate in some of the videos you do some tests on like the sways yeah how do you like the sways compared to the aeons um i don't know really like the sway i don't know i don't know what it is really i think the aeons are just like just way better i mean for me they fit really well so i don't really know it's just like i don't know <laughs> i just love aeons i i only really skate sways for like promotional videos and stuff like that it's right. not that they're not, it's not that they're not great it's just like i prefer the aeon it fits you me. Said it fits similar on the sways and the aeons you think what you think they fit the same? I've never skated the sways, so no, they feel different, yeah. And plus, the Aeon's all one piece, so I like that a lot better. I don't really like changing my skates too much, you know. I don't like touching things on my skates, I just get them till they're beat up and then I change. So, for me, Aeon's are just the perfect one. So, when you get your Aeon's in the mail from Power Slide, do you skate them straight out of box or did you do anything to them? Do you do any modifications? Do you change the wheels out to an undercover wheel or? No, just straight out of the box and they're on my feet. Yeah. I just take Perfect. out a few little bits like the laces on the liner because mm -hmm. I don't like loads of laces either. I don't like having to like take 10 minutes to put my skates on. I love skating so much that I just want to like put my foot in and go fast, you know? Right. Yeah. And that's how Robert Guerrero felt when because I really? was just with Robert Guerrero for everyone who hasn't doesn't know this. I Robert Guerrero was recently in Quebec and we went up there to film with him and I filmed him do an unboxing video of Nick Lomax's newest Aeon that's, Skate, which posted that's totally yesterday. Cool. 
That's so cool, yeah. man. What a legend. So you can check it out yeah. on the channel. And tomorrow, I'll post the review video that he I did. Saw, I saw it last yeah. night, but I've just been so busy here at Power Slide that I haven't had time to watch it yet, but I'll definitely watch that later. And Great. Robert is now skating those skates. So That's Power so Slide. He worked out an agreement with Matthias and the shop in Montreal, Boutique Solo, and they sent him a pair of skates. So now he has some skates that he's stoked on. So um, cool. Now, with um, you being back in, in the UK, how long were you there for? Uh, we two weeks, just two weeks. Two weeks. And a lot of that was doing rehab for your injury. I saw you were doing some cycling, yeah, yeah. some yeah, weight yeah. training. What have yeah. you been doing for your rehab for your meniscus tear well i've just been doing that really i've just been going out on little bike rides trying to go for little jogs and stuff like that just to keep it moving just to try and get it back into action it's a little it might be a little bit soon but uh there's no pain so i'm just trying to get it you know get it as like as bending like bend it as much as i can get it back to its old state because for a while it was like this i couldn't really like I couldn't really move it so much. It would probably get to like there and I had mm -hmm. to stop. But now, like after all that training, you can see I can almost fully straighten it. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. So it's all working really well. Now the mountain biking you were doing looked like it might've been a little intense for the injury. <laughs> How yeah, was that? I was going down one of those hills, just like, what am I doing? Why yeah. I don't use skates, right? It's more dangerous, but it, it wasn't that bad. The, to hey, honest, been on skates. I was filming with an Insta360 and that camera makes everything look like a lot bigger and faster too, right? So it wasn't that fast. Right. Yeah. And have you put skates on your feet since your tear? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, not, when I came back here, yeah, I started skating slowly. Like aggressive or big wheel? Not aggressive, just uh, not even, well, it's big wheels, but fitness. Mm -hmm, fitness. Making some fitness videos with Power Slide, yeah. I like all those power slide videos that they have with the different, you know, spec talks and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Been doing a few of those too here. So, and your YouTube channel, you've got about 10,000 subscribers now and you're posting pretty actively, but it's been almost 10 months since you had any skate content. Is that around the time you injured yourself? No, it's basically like I really always want to push my YouTube channel, but I'm always so busy with other videos that I, I just can't commit to it. Before, right, well, make sure and follow Nick's YouTube channel. Yeah, get on, on there. If not subscribe. Yeah. I'll Don't put a know. link in the description below. Click subscribe, man. So, I'm sorry to have interrupted you, but you were saying you don't have really the time to put into yeah. it. Yeah. So now, like, I mean, before it, it's all it's all a bit different now. Like before, I was on a fixed monthly wage. Mm -hmm. So I was able to just like, you know, make some videos for Power Slide and work on my stuff too. But now it's all incentive based. So I have to like try and make, you know, make up the make up the numbers to get my my right payment. So I don't have enough time to just concentrate on YouTube because I don't I don't make money off YouTube really. Okay. Right. I've made like thirteen dollars. If you go on my AdSense and check the balance, it says thirteen dollars. So YouTube's a tricky one to make money, but I'm sure if I put more effort in. And made one every week which is what i always want to do but it's just having the time for it well i can tell you i don't make any money on youtube either it's definitely yeah. a lot of work I, 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 figured out I made maybe like you know 10 cents an hour <laughs> for all the work i put That's into it than what i make mate <laughs> to be honest, back in the day when i was making it out and about they were uh they, i think i made around one time i withdrew like 200 euros from from youtube because I was doing them quite often and they got quite a lot of views. So it, at one point it was doing good, but then YouTube's a tricky one, right? It's really tricky YouTube. People think that if you get like a viral video, you're just a overnight millionaire, but it doesn't work like that. You have to be like posting. YouTube doesn't want to just give loads of someone loads of money for one video. They want you to be like active on there, posting loads, doing stories. You know, they want to, they want to make you work for it. Right, right. Now, I know that you have for your so other social media for your Instagram, you do actively post on that. And yeah. from Jump Street, so now you've got 40,000 more subscribers. Where? 
on your Instagram because you had forty thousand on your Jump Street interview, and now it's eighty thousand on your Instagram. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You've done your research. I didn't know that. <laughs> I have. Yeah. And we've got Tom. Tom Moyes is in the chat. What's up, he's, Tom? He's someone who's doing good at YouTube. Mm. And he's got a Patreon page. Yeah. He's and if you're not following Tom, him. make sure to follow him because he's really funny and has awesome shows and content. Great videos. Now, with your meniscus tear, I saw you know you have two videos on your channel, which is your last two videos you've put on there about your pre-op and your post-op. And what I, shocked me the most was, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was around 3,200 euros to get your surgery done. The, it's, yeah, 3,200 plus plus an MRI scan, which is 400. Okay. And uh, I actually like I actually went back to England to try and get it done there. So that cost money too. But um, uh -huh. it was, everything was so like like delayed because of COVID that it would have taken sure. about two years to get the operation, and I, I couldn't wait that long. And how long did it take to get in there in, in Spain? Uh, well, I paid, so they bloody shot oh. me in there. They were like, okay. get in here now, give us your money. See, I was looking at how much that would cost here in the U.S. And if you have insurance, you're looking around $4,500. Without insurance, you're looking at around $20,000 for the meniscus surgery. So what? that's why I was kind of shocked when you said 3,100 euros because everything's so expensive here with medical. Yeah. And not having insurance and being what that's like a sixth or, you know, a seventh as cheap as it is in the U.S., which is pretty nice, at least for people that's who don't crazy. have insurance. That's crazy. I mean, I heard that in the U.S., even if you call an ambulance, that costs loads of money, too. Right. A lot of money. I mean, they just milk you. I can't you know, believe it. And that's crazy. It's, criminal. it's a criminal system they have here. It's definitely an eye opener for me to get insurance now. I remember back, you know, in the San Diego days when I lived there and, you know, I filmed a lot. Had a lot. Yeah, actually. I remember that. Yeah. So I, did you used to come out there too at all? I came out once and we hung out. So I had a lot of people get hurt from, you know, Europe and Australia and yeah. none of them really had insurance. So we would always do the kind of like uh, go into the emergency room. And just kind of like dip out before paying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like always like, oh, we have our paperwork in the car. And then you just go to the car and you like leave. But then yeah. what happens then? Are you not going to get in trouble off like this? You just don't go back to that hospital. You just don't. I mean, it wasn't me. It was people from Europe and stuff who were never going to go back anyway. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right? Well, so it was like all Europeans and, you know, like Justin Buchanan and Ian Brown, like Ian Brown when he when he fell in a leap of faith. Oh my god! He, he hit his butt on the rail there. Um, what, what did he injure from that? What's that? What what injury did he get from that? Um, he had uh, he hit his elbow really bad, so he has just like he thought he broke his arm, but he didn't. And then Just Buchanan got a staph infection uh, from a fall on his leg, and it got real infected. And uh, same trip. So yeah, so you know, anyway, the insurance. I, mean, I, would, I would do the same though. I would do the same. I would just get it and run. Now, how long is your rehabilitation supposed to take with your meniscus tear? Um, I th it's around six months. So it look depends, at that. It depends on the winter. person, and it depends on the operation. I didn't actually have anything stitched. Mm -hmm. It wasn't torn in a way where, like, you know, they have to stitch it together. They just literally pulled it from my kneecap. Oh, wow. Yeah, and vacuumed out any, like, dead tissue and stuff like that. So there's actually you... nothing, there's nothing to, like, you know, it's just out and swollen. And how does it feel now compared to before surgery? Oh, it feels fantastic now. It's still hurting a little bit. Like, it, it hurts when I try to really straighten it, you know? When I try right. to fully straighten my leg, then it hurts when I get to like like right there. But now it's like it's pretty straight now. So I'm I'm pretty happy about that, man. You know, because before the operation, I was just like I started to think about my life and my you know, dreaming about tricks and is it all gone now? You know, is that it? I'm 35, I'm not that young anymore. So I'm quite happy now, man, that I know that I can recover from it and skate again. 
Well, that's good to hear. So you should be recovered just in time for Winter Clash, which they just announced is happening again. Yeah, next year. I'm definitely going to Winter Clash this time. I've I've missed it. I really missed it. I didn't go for the last few years. Uh -huh. It's a bit hectic when you're a pro skater, you know. It is a bit hectic, and sometimes contests are just contests. I don't like really love contests. I'm not like like I want to compete, you know. I just kind of go to like hang out, but then everyone's like, "What are you gonna do? What tricks are you gonna do? Are you gonna do this?" And you get a bit like, you know, I get a bit overwhelmed by it all. So I'm well, that's all you had at when you hit your head. That was at Winter Clash, right? When, uh, no, that was, um, I think that was in Switzerland. Okay, because that was pretty gnarly. I've never seen anybody hit their head like that on a support column. Yeah, I was walking sideways for like two months. I, I couldn't really like put my body straight. I was like this and I couldn't move my arms that well. I never got it checked out either, which was stupid because in, in Switzerland, they said, oh, you can go to the hospital and get a checkup, but it's going to cost you like 3,000 pounds or whatever. And I was like, I'll just go home and figure it out from there. Oh, wow. That was bad though, yeah. And what's your worst injury you've ever had? I guess the knee. I've got a pretty crazy one on my finger. I don't know if anyone's seen that in my videos. My finger doesn't bend. Watch okay, this. Yeah, that. yeah. This is me really trying to bend my finger. And what happened to that? It fell off. Half fell off in uh, Turkey. In Turkey? Yeah, I was on I was on a skate trip, and um, it was like the last trick of the day. It's always like that, right? It's the very last trick. I'd, I'd almost taken, put my shoes back on, and uh, a couple of kids were like, can you show us a 360 grind? And I was like, all right, let's go. So I tried a 360 sole, and uh, I missed the box, and the metal bit in between, you know, like a shotgun box, Mm -hmm. You have a thing in the middle, like a support. That didn't have supports underneath of it. So it was like a bendy metal. So I basically cheese grated my finger. And when, when the pressure of my, like my body came off, my finger was still stuck in there and it dragged. So it, like wow. I couldn't get it out. And some, some, some other guy that was there was like, don't worry, I'll help you. I was like, no. And he pushed down on the box my finger came out like luckily he did that because who knows you know i might have had to call an ambulance they might have had to get tools to get me out so he pushed down my finger came up and it was here sounds that, like terrible injury as well my knee injury is definitely the worst one but the finger was pretty traumatic you know i can imagine i got a t-shirt and wrapped it around it and then uh, it was a friday night in turkey so the hospitals were all quite busy and um, no one could do it. No hospital could do it. So I went to like four different hospitals to get it sewn back on. That's terrible. That and every really doctor, terrible. doctor I met that night, they were like, oh, give it here. Let me see. It can't be that bad. And they would take off the T-shirt. And even one of the doctors went, whoa. <laughs> when a doctor does that, it's, it's, gonna, it's a bad injury, right? Right. Yeah. That's uh, I, I don't like blood and... Like I split my shit open before and just like fainted. I'm just not a blood person. Yeah, this there was but, actually not much blood from the finger. Oh, there wasn't. No, I don't. It was pretty weird, but you could see right through it. You know, it was like uh -huh. I don't want to go into detail. You might pass out. <laughs> you might pass out live if I start going into details. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I'm definitely uh, definitely skirmish with that stuff. Now yeah, at 35 years old. Um, is there any tricks that you've found more difficult to do the older you get? Oh, good question. Um, well, here's something I've been thinking about recently. I don't know if it's like if when I was younger, I wasn't doing the size gaps that I'm doing now. So when I was younger, I could skate every day, but I wasn't necessarily like jumping off things like I am now, you know? Mm -hmm. So now, now if I have a heavy day of skating, and I'm skating all day long doing gaps and jumps. And sometimes I can get like 10 clips a day when I'm out there in Barcelona because it's, it's, it's on your doorstep. There's so many spots. But then say I'm doing a 540 gap that's huge and I don't land it for a, a few attempts. Then the next day I can barely walk. I have to take a few days off and start stretching. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's my age or if it's because I'm just jumping off higher things now. So I can't quite figure that out. But I mean, I feel good. I feel good when I'm... You know, I still feel like young and fit and healthy. So, 
So for spots in Barcelona, you've been living there for how many years now? Ten years. Ten years. So have you skated almost everything that you've wanted to skate in the city? Yeah, no, there's one spot I've never been to <laughs> that I really want to go to. You might have seen it. It's like a a banana shape like this. It starts from the floor and it mm -hmm. goes all the way up and then down with a big drop in the middle. That I've never been there because it's not actually in Barcelona. It's a few hours out in a car and I, I didn't know where it was for a long time. But now I do. But now I'm not there and I'm injured. So that's one spot I want to skate. But yeah, man, I've literally like... I was telling someone the other day, I can see a picture on Instagram of some, a friend in Barcelona and it might only be their feet and a bit of floor and a bit of a building. And I can say, I know where that is. That's Just amazing. a few small things, you know. And now I skate around Barcelona and I know where the cracks are in the floor. You know, I know where, where like when, when to jump. I could almost skate around blindfolded and, and know what I'm doing. Now, skating Barcelona for so long, have you got bored with some of the spots or is it still as exciting as it was when you first moved there? No, I'm getting bored now. And is there anywhere you would want to possibly move to other than Barcelona? Our side. <laughs> Our side. <laughs> no, gonna work, they'll work me to the bone if I move here. But um, I don't know, man. I was thinking like I might regret one day that I lived in somewhere for so long when I didn't, I could be anywhere in the world. So why don't mm -hmm. I switch up a bit? You know, I might regret it one day and sit there and think, why did I stay in that place for so long? So I think I might actually start trying to like switch it up, you know, and just maybe keep my base in Barcelona, but travel out more to different places. Because Barcelona is so cool that it, it's kind of hard to leave. You know, you're all, it's like, oh, let's go on holiday somewhere, but you're on holiday, you're in Barcelona. Right. So it's hard to leave that place. Well, I agree. It's definitely good to live in different places. I've lived in like four different places and I love them all, you know, in equally in their own ways. Um, so I feel like once you find a place that you like, then, you know, you won't miss Barcelona quite as much. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Man. Is there any cities that you do like that you would consider living in? Oh, wow. I'm not. Um, I always said Copenhagen was really cool. It's just not the best weather. It's like weather in England and it's mm -hmm. really expensive, but it's a really cool place. And I, I went to New York once and I fell in love with New York. I thought that was incredible. But it's just. Well, if you live in New York, you can come visit me here in Vermont. Yeah, like exactly. five hours later. I'll be hitting you up, mate. All right. But I mean, that's a, bit, that's a bit of a dream. You know, that's, I, I, I don't think I'd move to New York. I'd miss my family and stuff like that. And like, I mean, I know. I live in Barcelona. I don't see my family as much as I want, but like still New York's just a bit too far, isn't it? You know, I well, you your said family. in your interview, you see your family once a year about. Is that yeah, still yeah, I'm making that more often now, though. I'm, I'm going yeah. quite I'm going home quite more regular just because, you know, my sister had kids and stuff like that. And my brother and like I'm the uncle that no one knows kind of. So now I've been going back more regularly and now now it's cool. Now they know me and stuff like that. So. I want to keep it like that, really. I want yeah, to be really cool. Yeah. Have any of them got on skates yet? Sorry? Have any of the kids gotten on skates yet? No, one of them's on a bike. Um, I haven't tried to push it, but I, I might try soon. Next time I go home. Perfect. I've had, well, a pair of, I've had one of them on a pair of mine, but they were too big. And I was just like, uh -huh. holding them. I was like, way. <laughs> That's awesome. I think I a wanted to... Anyway, so. No, go, what was, go ahead. They're just a bit too young yet, you know, they're, they're right. playing on little bikes and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'll wait till they get a bit older and then I'll introduce it for sure. Uh, how's, how old is the oldest one right now? Uh, the oldest one is, oh God, I think she's like, she's called Mia. She's, I think she's six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon though. Pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. That'd be yeah. really cool. I oh, want to ask you what there. Yeah. I can't remember my birthday sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, going back to your, your, you had mentioned that you got a salary from USD or PowerSlide, and now it's on incentive base. Is that part of the whole Umpro thing that they've been doing um, with USD? Say that again, sorry. Uh, it, you had mentioned that with your payment from USD, you used to get a salary, and now it's more incentive based. Is that correct? 
Yeah, it's nothing to do with the kind that like our advertising. And what's the advertising? Can you tell us what that's about? The Unpro campaign? Basically just wanted everyone to start talking about us. Okay. And it bloody worked. <laughs> so yeah, all right. I just didn't know if it had a change with uh how people got paid or anything like that. It's just a no, no, it's not, it's not to do with that. It was just like we were kind of like we're not really like you know, USD just kind of got a bit nothing, you know, there wasn't really much going on. So we all had a big team talk and we were like, how can we get back in there? You know, so mm -hmm. we just caused a stir. Everyone's freaking out about it more than we are. Like, it's just it's just a, a few words on a paper, you know, but now everyone's talking about it. So job yeah. well done. That's good. I mean, everyone's trying to decipher what it means, you know, and a lot of people think they know what it means. But obviously, it's just a marketing yeah, we don't even know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So for well, incentive wise, we, we don't really care. You know, it's not that it's not that we don't care. It's just like it was just a, yeah, it was just to like get our name out there, really, and that's it. So for your incentives, you get paid for content on YouTube, edits you do, Instagram. How does it work? Like what what type of content are you being incentive? to it's not even a word but to, to produce well all of our all of my sponsors from power slide run it like that now so basically you you have to do a few clips per month for each for each company okay. and you get you get paid a, a certain amount for doing that so there's and like who are your sponsors now all underneath this, our side oh, good question um power slide obviously the urban stuff usd undercover Wicked Bearings, Anui. Um, they're going to kill me because I'm going to forget loads now. What have I not missed? Let me just look around the room. Uh, Epic Shoes. Uh, uh, My Fit Liners. Did I say that one? No. Nope. My Fit Liners. What else have we got here? So pretty much every power slide brand you skate for. Well, yeah, not for everybody. Like, you know, everyone has their own things that they do. But yeah. Cool. And before Power Slide, did you have any sponsors like before USD back you know, 18 years ago? Um, no, I think well, I might have had some like small, like bearing company or stuff like that, but nothing. Power Slide was like my biggest one. Right. Well, so you've basically been with Power Slide USD since your first sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. I've been talking with Matthias for like 17 years now. That's amazing. So it's pretty yeah, cool. Matthias. He know he he really knows me because you know I was I've been a kid emailing him like, okay, yeah, send me here, cool. And like he he we've been speaking to each other for so many years. So it's pretty cool now because when I come here, we we've got the banter with each other, you know. What's your favorite trip or tour you've made since you've ridden for Powerslide or USD or any other brands? Wow. So one that sticks out as your absolute favorite trip experience? Um, that's a, such a tough question, man. It feels like a big blur when I think back to it all. You know, I, I can't really, I couldn't put a finger on each one. I can say that, like, I'm very, very lucky to be with Power Slide. They've sent me around the world. They give me some of the best experiences in my life, you know? Mm hmm like people complain about things like they don't pay you enough or they don't give you insurance but they forget to mention that like i've been to places that like i would never have been to you know without power slide supporting me so there's things that people don't know about you know i've had the, the craziest life ever it's been so cool man i've been to places that like that have just been breathtaking so i'm very i'm very appreciative of that man what's the most breathtaking places you can think of Ah, oh, God, I've got to be a couple. Yeah, but I mean, right now, I just can't think. I mean, <laughs> New York. <laughs> New York, yeah. Yeah. Now, okay, so traveling, is there, who do you enjoy traveling with the most? Well, I haven't traveled for a long time now. So, um, I mean, I travel a lot with Richie Eisler. So, me and Richie do some good traveling. He's one of my, like, my best tour buddies for sure. We get along really well. So in Barcelona, who is your crew that you skate with the most as far as aggressive skating? And then with Big Well Blading, is it a separate crew or is it does everybody kind of do the same different things? No, nah, it's just, yeah, we have a crew and whatever you come out on that day, you just skate. There's no like, there's no 
you know nobody's like oh you've got big wheels get away it's just like let's go please yeah um i used to hang out a lot with uh, a, a bunch of italians from from napoli called the marios <laughs> shouldn't call them that but uh so we we i met them guys and um they're awesome so i spent a lot of time with those guys filming out and about if you've seen any of my out and abouts you'll see them all in there so yeah i used to love hanging out with them but things change you know people get older and um now they're working and moving on having kids and stuff like that so we're not really hanging out as much i mean i see them all the time but they're not skating as much either so so no kids for you yet huh no no kids for me and in barcelona uh you've been there what's your what's your favorite terrain like you just like to when it comes to big wheel skates do you just like to skate around a city and cruise do you go into you know, the night skates they have uh, do you do any like long distance skates? No, I don't do stuff like that. No, I'm, I'm just kind of like, I don't know when my skates are on, I'm kind of working, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite driven by like, I really like to be productive and I like to like post things on Instagram and stuff like that. So whenever my skates go on, it's, it's pretty much work. Right. So I'm kind of just doing that most of the time. Like I, you, you don't really catch me just like just cruising. It, actually, if you see me in skating in Barcelona, is probably on the way home from somewhere and I'm super tired because I've been skating street all day. So, you know, people have met me before and been like, I thought you'd be better at skating because I'm just like, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. And I, I'm not really like, you know, cruising around like this. Only when the camera's on, I, I do that really. Right. Okay. I mean, so I do go cruise and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. I'm always on skates. I only have one pair of shoes. So, you know, I'm always got skates on. And sometimes, yeah, we do just go out for a cruise and stuff like that. But I'm never like, you know, like, wow, 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 training around. And when it comes to grass skating, who films most of your clips for you? Me. <laughs> you them, like you set up, set up a camera or? Yeah, I got my Insta360 camera now. Shout out to them. Um, so that's a bit of a game changer. Now, because like my friends are not filmers, you know, they're just skaters. So I can't expect them to be filming like cinematic clips of me and and they're skating too and i don't want to bother their sessions anymore you know i don't want to be like hey can you stop doing your tricks so you can film me so now i just take my insta360 camera with me set up my iphone and i get the clip that way but we've cool. got we've also got a new filmer here at power slide he's called rafa i don't know if mm -hmm. you've seen any of the new videos from like all of our companies here but he's incredible he's really really good at filming and editing so I'm really awesome. enjoying him. Yeah, I'm really enjoying filming with him right now. That's really cool. Yeah, man. Now, who, who's your favorite or who who's the best skater in Barcelona in your opinion right now? Me? No, nah, joking. Uh I don't know, man. There's a lot of great skaters in Barcelona, you know. It'd yeah, be hard it'd be hard to choose one, but like for sure Mitchell Prado and Carlos Bernal, those names come to my head straight away. Mm -hmm. Sasha Lopez. Yeah, yeah, these guys are smashing it, man. Like real hammer time. Mitchell actually recently I, I met those guys and Mitchell was trying to do a trick. And uh we met at the spot, we're all hanging out and stuff, and then we go around the corner and it was the biggest disaster top sole that I've ever seen in my life. It was like a down flat down and a ledge on the right. And he jumps from the top to top sole on the ledge. It was just mind blowing. One of those tricks that you're watching and you're just like, like, cannot believe it shaking whilst filming it, you know, like, oh, my God. So that was really breathtaking, man. Those guys go really hard. That's amazing. I definitely saw a lot of skaters skating different spots. You know, every time I go to Barcelona, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And has Barcelona, I mean, during COVID, was there a lot less people in Barcelona, like skater wise? I wasn't really there, man. I was in Asia for COVID and then I came back to England and I, I just laid, I laid low in England for a while. And then when, when the airports opened again, then I went back. But then by then it was all kind of like the lockdown was over. But I've heard off other people that it was pretty, like, pretty terrible. You know, you weren't even allowed out your house. So, yeah. And what were you doing in Asia? I was just traveling around, man. I was skating. I, I went to Japan for a contest. And um, I just ended up staying out there. I was there with no and no invited me to Thailand. So I was like, okay. why not? So I did that. And then, you know, every, every city I went to, 
somebody else would message me. So the guys in Malaysia were hitting me up like, hey, you want to come hang out here? So then I went there. And then the guys from Indonesia hit me up saying, hey, you want to come here? You're pretty close. So I was like, yeah, why not go with the flow? So yeah, I just did a bit of traveling. It turned from I said to my friend, to Nano, I said, hey, can you watch my cat for a few days? He's like, yeah, no problem. I came back like four months later. <laughs> That's amazing. That's one place I've always wanted to travel more is Asia, like to all those Never countries. Been. I went to Japan once for Razor's tour, but that's about it. And yeah, Japan definitely, sick, definitely uh, sounds like a great time. Um, really I want to get into your like history in skating a little bit. Like, right. how did you first get started in skating? How old were you? And uh, and how did it all begin? Um, so I was in primary school and, um, like skating was something that should have never happened to me really, unless I met this one guy, he's my best friend. He's from Bolton and uh, he's called David and he was from Germany actually, or his, his, his dad was it like over in Germany on a, on a, like a English camp or something like that. So he was born there and then he moved back to England. And um, he sat next to me in school. So he sat right next to me. And because like, because he was from somewhere else, he had different hobbies and interests and stuff. And he was the one that one day just said, hey, did you try rollerblading? And he showed me. And then since then, since that day, it, it never stopped. So that was like primary school days, man. But I've been, so yeah, I've been skating since like 1998. Okay, yeah, it's quite a long time. Yeah, and then... um back before youtube and stuff like that we found this video that we downloaded that was um god what was it oh no sorry he uh he went to he went to visit his dad and there was when there used to be skate shops they had videos and it wasn't new at the time but they had vg7 and when he brought that back that changed everything because we didn't really know what we were doing so much we were just kind of trying to grind things and just like jumping off steps and stuff like that. But when we watched a real video, then it all kind of was like, whoa, so that's what we got to do. So like, I know VG7, like the back of my hand. If I hear any song that's from that video, I'm like, <gasps> that's awesome. Who had sections in that video now? Do you remember? Uh, Josh Petty. Huh? There was a sick Josh Petty section. There was, um, I, I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was when like commercials were on videos and stuff like that. It was really sick. So who was your, who, what skaters influenced you the most back in your early days of skating? Uh, man, I used to look up to Aaron Feinberg more than anything. And Chris Farmer. I saw a video of Chris Farmer. Uh, that, it just blew my mind. So, yeah, I'm big fans of those two for sure. And who was your favorite UK skater growing up? Oh, good question. I mean, Chaz Sands used to blow my mind. Chaz Sands used to show up at ramp works and like whenever he would get ready to do a trick on the rail, the whole building would be like, <gasps> you know, get ready. He's going to do something crazy. And that used to just blow my mind because every trick he was doing was like 540 true top soul to alley soul full cab out and might like just like blown away by that. So, yeah, definitely looked up to him a lot. Nah, he's a good guy. Do you still yeah. keep up with the UK blade scene? Um, not really, man. I don't really keep up with much in in like you know i don't really i'm always out skating so i don't really you know i don't really keep up with much of it to be honest but i should do i want to do i want to start going back for contests and stuff like that so i will do in the future yeah who's your favorite uk skater right now uh probably my homie alex burston uh, alex is a great great skater as well yeah uh, and a really cool guy yeah really cool guy i grew up with him like uh, years later after i like you know, I, I went to this certain skate park in Bolton for so long. And then um, when that closed down, it was time to, like, you know, move on. So then I went to Manchester <clears throat> and I met all the Manchester sh skaters. So shout out to the Boises. And um, that's where I met Burson and Scott and stuff like that. And then we, we, we hung out and skated for years and years after that. So, yeah. So what was a better skate park, Bolton Bones or Manchester Bones? It was Stockport Bones, but Bolton Bones was way better, man. Yeah, it had the coolest starting ramp. It was like this, like, and in the middle of it, it had a shotgun rail going down. So I learned a lot of stuff on that. And it was pretty gnarly. So 
I often sit there and think like, wow, that was a gnarly box. And now I wonder what I would do on it now. Because I back in the day, I was doing like three soul, three soul on it. And it is pretty gnarly. So I was sat there the other day thinking like, wow, I wonder if I still got that. <laughs> what was your favorite trick to do growing up? Was there one that you like a one of your just favorite go to tricks? Not really, man. I was always trying all of them. You know, I liked like, I guess one trick spin to another trick that that's my favorite thing to do that's why i i can do that really well because i i used to also have a skate park that was near my parents house that was built by the council that was absolutely terrible but it had an up across and down box that had a shotgun rail in the middle so there was no rollerbladers where i lived it was just me and a couple of like chavs over there that i knew so they were cool but i basically just go down there alone and I'd skate for hours and hours and hours on my own, just doing like up across and down tricks, like, you know, all the variations and stuff like that. So, and today, I, is your what's your favorite trick to do? Oh, not too sure. I guess I do a lot of true top soles and fives, five ses slides. I really love doing ses slides, five ses slide, things like that. But yeah, not nothing specific, you know, just, just whatever comes when basically the spot chooses you, right? Mm hmm get to the spot and if it's not for you you don't do anything but then you see another one and you're like oh that's for me so i just kind of go like that and moving on to free skating when did you start skating on bigger wheel skates that was when i moved to barcelona i'd never really used them before that and did you do it just because parasite like asked you to or did you like want to get into riding big wheels no, it was just like Bass is a big place, you know, and I just was like, I may as well try it. You know, I may as well get some big wheels so I can cruise around faster just for like the nighttime sessions and stuff like that. So I guess I slowly got I got on some 80 millimeters. Power slide were encouraging it too. They said like it'd be sick if you could start making edits for it. So yeah, it was just like that. And then I got into it. And what's your favorite uh, wheel set wheel size or frame setup for big wheel blading? Big wheel, probably 80 mil. 80 mil? Yeah, I don't often skate it because, you know, we got all, there's all kinds of wheels here. Mm -hmm. So I, I just skate whatever they want promotion for. But if it was my choice, I would stick to 80s. Have you ever tried to skate a wizard frame setup? Uh, I've tried Nicola's, Nicola Torelli's. And it was what pretty, was that like? It was pretty nice, actually. I like the rocker on it. It's really mm -hmm. easy to slide and stuff like that. Actually, when I did a slide on them, I was kind of like, they're cheating. <laughs> it's too easy on these. It's really easy to slide on them because it's rocket, right? So you're already right. able to get into that spin. So yeah, the new advanced, the advanced frame ones, I believe. Sorry? He's getting the new uh, the new wizard advanced frames. Uh, like, it's like ones like this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I like think that's that, right. Frame. You can yeah. already you can already start getting into your slide easier. Yeah, those are really cool. I want to actually yeah. skate some of those sometime. But when it's like completely flat, you have to push it more. You know, you can stick, you can like and fall over. So yeah, I found I found it nice to slide on those wizards. Yeah. And has your approach to aggressive skating changed at all since you started skating big wheel and urban skating a little bit? Hundred percent. Yeah. It changed everything for me um, because on big wheels, I couldn't do grinds. So I was like, well, I've got to keep it kind of like, you know, aggressive style on big wheels. So I just started to jump things. And before I got big wheels, I wasn't that great at jumping. So I, I got some big wheels and thought, right, how can I impress everyone on these things? And I thought, well, I'll just start jumping stuff. So then I started to like really jump far. You know, and then I put my aggressives on again and mixing it like oh, over the years, mixing them both up together. Now I'm able to like fly and jump really high and far on my aggressives as well. So that definitely helped me. So how often, how, how much do you split your time between aggressive and big wheel? Do you do aggressive more or is it about the same? Mm, it depends, man. It depends like. It all depends on like what's going on. You know, it all depends on like where you go what you're doing and stuff like that but if i'm making a video for aggressive then i'll probably stick on them for a few weeks and then in between that i'll just quickly go out on some big wheels but i'm not really too sure just like whatever man whatever goes you know whatever i feel like whatever needs promotion i'll just pick it up and go
if they say that the Aeons need a push, then I'll stay on them for the month, make a few edits. And then when that's done, then I'll be like, oh, what else needs a push? And they're like, well, some some one tens. We got some one tens here for you. So then I'll get them and then I'll skate them until they're kind of broke. And then I'll get some more. So there's nothing like there's nothing set in stone. I don't have like a list of days I skate different things. It's just like just go with the flow, you know, just just skate everything. That's what I love to do. And with the Aeon skates, you have Aeon 60s, 72s, and 80s. I believe there are three sizes. Do you just skate the 60s mainly, or do you like skating other sizes as well? Yeah, I skate them all. Yeah, I skate all of them. I make videos for all of them. Which one's your favorite size? 60 mil Aeon. Just because I'm, I'm a street skater, right? I, I love skating street. I love skating rails. 80 mil's got a smaller groove. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if, if you were to say, what skate would you take for the rest of your life now? I would take the 60 mil Aeon. That one. That one right there. You guys see that? Everyone can see that there. Still plenty of pairs, pairs available. If you fancy getting a, yourself a pair, go for it. <laughs> I do have a question about that skate. Robert Guerrero and I were curious. You used to have a strap on the older skates, so and now there's a little hook on there. What's the purpose of the hook versus the strap? The strap for me was just another thing to close, to tighten. Like I said, I don't really like laces. I like to just put the skate on and go fast. And the hook was perfect for that. You can just, you've got one lace, you know, or well, you've got the one on the liner too, if you have that. But I, I just really like to like, you know, you need a little bit of support to keep your foot in nice, to keep it nice and sturdy. So the hooks for me were perfect. Now I can just tie one thing done and I'm, I'm away filming. And yeah, we couldn't actually figure out the best way to tie the hook. Do you, like, do you use the hook or you just not yeah, use, I the, use hook? the hook? Yeah, I, I do a little bow, a little like cross. Then I okay. put it around the hook, and then I do the proper one. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of make it like a strap. It's pretty much a strap. Okay. But All it, right, yeah. I was. We were just more confused on what to do with it. Yeah, I go off like, man, I, I just love I'm – the, I'm the first person with the skates on and the last to take them off, you know. And, like, when I do take them off, I want to just do it fast. You know, I want to get them on quick. I can't wait sometimes. I'm, like, eager. Were you working on any video projects before you got hurt? Yeah, my pro skate edit. That's how it happened. And did that footage come out since then, or are you saving it? Well, no, we, it's all been out on Instagram. In the end, I injured myself, so I couldn't get any more. Uh, so we just put single clips out. We made, you know, we chopped a few bits from one clip, so it turned into like a 20, 30 second clip for Instagram. Because, yeah, I couldn't, I, like, after the injury, I couldn't carry on with the edit. And then and I you did. I got better, but then my filmer wasn't there. So I was right. like, hey, I'm just going to smash the Instagram for the promotion. And then I then I bashed it again, like you saw in the video. And did, have you got heard at all on the Epic Shoes? Yeah. <laughs> but that's because my fault. I'm just stupid. I remember, you know, back in the day, I had a pair of soap shoes. And they were a lot of fun. But I definitely remember getting people getting hurt quite a bit. And yeah. When I well, saw you got injured before I like watch the videos and stuff, I was like, I was curious if it actually happened on the Epic Shoes. Yeah, it's happened a few times where I've stuck and gone flying. So that, I enjoy that, those. that for me is not that cool because then, you know, you can't roll, but you can't skate. Right. You hurt yourself on shoes. You're like, ah. Oh. But you still, enjoy them? Enjoy them? Yeah, I love them. I had, um, I had soap shoes too, but I also, before I had soap shoes, I used to have a pair of kickers, which is, a, I don't know if they're in America, but they're, they're an, old, an old famous shoe from the UK. And uh, they've, they've got like this natural groove that was like, like that. So I was doing soap shoes before anything, really. That's how it all started. Just when it had rained at school, which was pretty much every day where I'm from, I would just slide around on benches all day at my lunchtime, just trying to do as long, long grinds and show off at school and stuff like that and be like, Pow. So yeah, I've done that for a long time too. But it's nice that they're back, man. I was I'm super juiced on them. Yeah, they're rad. I feel like they're a little bit scarier uh when you're older than when you're a kid. Yeah, maybe. I'd say that too, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and and Ollie Bennett, he's kind of the, the the mastermind behind that. Yeah, yeah. He brought it back and he knew that 
you know, he knew that it would explode and stuff like that. So he yeah, he made it all happen. Shout out to and Ollie Bennett. And is he still in the Barcelona area? Yeah, uh, no, he moved away from there now. So he doesn't live in Barcelona, but he's still in Spain. And how long have you had samples of those shoes for that you were testing out? Before? Well, the others that had them longer than me, I think Eugen and actually Eugen and Ollie were talking before me. Um, but like a year. I've I've been I knew about it a year before and we've been testing them and stuff like that. All right. Cool. Mm. I definitely uh I'm gonna have to try to get some just to see what they're like again. Yeah, man. Should try it. There yeah. was actually a skate park in Houston, Texas called Armadillo Skate Shop. Yeah. That was basically designed it wasn't designed for soap shoes, but it was like basically designed for soap shoes. So it was like a yeah. basic skate park. Yeah. And it was pretty fun. And it was like right at the height of soap shoes. So it was like all bladers and soap shoes. Yeah. <laughs> really? No way. Yeah. Didn't they used to have contests and stuff like that? I saw some videos where there was contests with like rollerbladers and soapers like doing tricks. I never saw that before, but that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> because soap shoes kind of very, like, uh... Sometimes you land fakey and you think you're on rollerblades. <laughs> so you're coming so off I... the end of the trick and you're like, okay, no, go forward right. and run. <laughs> Well, you have that guy on, on Epic that's the parkour guy. So um, I don't, don't know his name, but when he, you see him come off rails, he actually like rolls and stuff. So yeah. it's a lot safer than just... Well, I, I'm really into parkour too. I love parkour. I love it. I, th I think it's really awesome. I follow these guys called Stora on YouTube. You guys should check them out. They, they drop amazing videos. I'm getting to the point too now where I know all the trick names and stuff too. Oh, really? Yeah, so I've I've kind of told myself, like, I don't have much hobbies outside of skating. You know, I just skate. That's my life. But definitely when this knee's better, I'm going to start training parkour. So I think it's good to mix it with skating, too. Like, I love that style of skating. You know, like Matthew Ledeau and Eugen Enin, they're kind of like that kind of flex. Swinging around poles and then landing on a trick. I love that stuff, man. That's really cool. So Matthew Ledeau, the interview I just did with Robert Guerrero last week that I posted on the Done and Outblading YouTube channel, which I have a link in the description below, he talks about when he first met Matthew Ledeau. It's because he wanted to get into parkour. He'd never met Matthew. Somebody had mentioned that Matthew had a parkour gym in Quebec. So he just emailed him, ended up going to Quebec, staying with Matthew and training at, in, in parkour with Matthew yeah. and Kevin Lapierre. And... Uh, and got into that, which I never yeah, even knew. Yeah, nice. Yeah. No, I... um, but you know, when we were when I was there in Quebec last week, we were at the skate park, and it was the first time I've ever seen a bunch of parkour kids like at a skate park, like using yeah. a skate park as a parkour course. And a few days after that, I was in Boston. We went to a skate park, and the next to the skate park, they actually had a parkour park. It was the first like outdoor parkour park I've ever seen. A parkour park. That's a hard yeah, one. Say, park. That, say that three times. <laughs> I feel park. like, uh, you know, it's gotten really popular the past few years. And I don't live in a city. You know, I live very rural. So a lot of things I haven't seen, like, really you know, evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things I saw, which blew my mind, was in Boston, was the amount of, like, TikTokers filming themselves on the streets, making videos all over the place. Like, I well, never saw doing silly dances. What were they doing? Silly dances, yeah, just silly dances and like all sorts of stuff, just in the middle of the road, you know, all over the place. Girls doing photo shoots and bikinis and whatever. It was like all over. And I never seen it anywhere. Yeah, I'm not so down with TikTok, man. I had a, I had an account and um half the comments, I would post a cool clip, and half the comments on there were like, Oh my god, his knees, how are your knees not breaking? What are you doing? This is stupid. And I was like, delete. <laughs> delete. I didn't delete my account. I just left it there just in case. But I've deleted the app. I've not used it for a long time. Yeah, I've, I've not used it. I mean, I, I signed it's up for it. My things were getting there. deleted, too, because they were too dangerous. And it wasn't oh, even really? that. Hard. It'd be like a five set slide. And they're like, this, this is considered too dangerous. It's been deleted. So I was like, well, I'll delete you then. That's funny. Yeah, I've just never been into it. Um, now living in Barcelona, I'm sure you've had a lot of people come to visit you. Yeah, man. You've had a lot of house guests. Uh, yeah. Is it still that way? Do you still have your door open to friends and visitors or has that toned down 
There's a all. lot of people that owe me some night sleep at their house. Let's just say that. <laughs> like I was just at Sam Croft's house, right? Shout out to Sam, but uh, he stayed at my house loads and loads. So whenever I go to London now, I almost don't even ask. <laughs> I'm like, I'm coming. And he's like, okay. So that's but, what happened to me when I, you know, in 1999, I went to Europe for seven months and I basically stayed with skaters every single night all over Europe. Yeah. For free. And then I moved to San Diego in the early 2000s, which is like where the time I where everyone was in San Diego. So, you know, basically my place was a hostile hotel for, you know, 10 years. Yeah. You know, giving everybody the favor back of, you know, having stayed at their house. Barcelona is a tricky one for that, man, because like it's nonstop. People come all year round. So even when you're at your most exhausted because a group of friends just left, the next day another one arrives. Mm -hmm. And the really good friends, you can't say, nah, I'm tired. You know, you're like, oh, okay, go, go, go. So it's like that in Barcelona. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was like in San Diego at that time, too. You know, because the weather is always 70 degrees and, you know, sunny yeah. like it is in, like in Barcelona, except yeah. it's hotter in Barcelona. Yeah. Um, who has been your worst house guest? Dan O'Gorman. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He's been the best one. I don't I don't have any bad house guests, man. You know. If you come into my house to stay, then I obviously know you and we're cool. So now did somebody leave a bag of something in front of your house? Some Kevin Chow had said to ask you about a bag of shit or something i don't know oh god yeah <laughs> bloody hell kevin <laughs> well yeah I had, I had a few friends over and we were quite loud and the neighbors weren't too happy about it so one of the neighbors put their dog shit oh sorry they put the dog poop in a bag and left it outside my house outside my door that's not too bad <laughs> <laughs> so I, I picked up the bag and I thought I knew which neighbor did it. So I went down and put it back outside of their door. Like, you can have it back. But it turns out I put it at the wrong door, man. And then I went away for a few days. And when I came back, at the very bottom of my apartment building was a letter saying, not sure what's going on in this building, but someone's <laughs> like leaving bags of like outside of people's doors. Can we not do that, please? And like, yeah, that's how that went. That's really funny. Yeah, but it wasn't. So, like... in your 10 years in Barcelona, have you learned any Spanish? Si, mucho. Mucho. That's all I've learned, just two words. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can answer that question. Now, I've learned a bit of Spanish, but um, I don't know. Like, it seems like in Barcelona, the, the expats or whatever you call them, uh, they all kind of hang out together. So, we're in a little bubble of English speaking people. You know, because not everyone's from England either. So people might be from Poland and stuff like that. So we we use English to communicate. So, we, you know, we're in a big group of people all speaking English all day. So right, not really time. You're not really learning that much. I mean, English has always been, a, you know, kind of the, the unifying language. In, in exactly. Language. And, and as, as much as I should learn some more Spanish. It is it is a bit difficult when you're surrounded by, you know, people talking English like that. And man, plus I'm not really like I'm not in Barcelona going to work or like, you know, really speaking to many people. I just go skate all day. That's all I'm doing. So I'm out skating. I'm hardly talking to people. I know how to I know enough to get by to go into a supermarket and not have any problems or, you know, nip to somewhere else and have a chat with someone real quick. But yeah, it does get to a point where then they reply to me like really fast. And I'm like, uh, vale. <laughs> What's your favorite food to eat in Barcelona? Um, empanadas. They're great. And what's, and what's your favorite type of empanada? There's, there's a guy that like lives near my house. He's a sweet old man. And uh, he actually lives next to a little that's just opened. So it's running him out of business. So I go there like as much as I possibly can. And I even pay more than I should just to like support him a little bit. So I love going to that guy's shop. 
I don't, I can't remember the name of it or location, but uh, it's really cool, sweet old man. So I go there a lot and just try and help him out. He's got really nice chicken empanadas. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to make a trip to Barcelona and go help him out as yeah. well. I'll take you there, mate. He's a cool guy. That'd be awesome. And I see you go, you drink a lot of coffee. Uh, I'm trying to cut down. Yeah, I had one about an hour ago, but that's because I'm tired today. I've been up since like 7.30, so. But, yeah, I saw yeah. in your videos you made, you know, for your meniscus. First thing you had to do was get some coffee. Yeah, yeah, I do like a coffee in the morning, man, for sure. What what type of coffee do you order? I mean, in, in Spain, you just order a cafe con leche, you know? There's not mm -hmm. many. Other, it's just like, so I have coffee with milk. That's it. I'm not like, I'm not a fancy guy that has all, any kind of fancy coffee. I think in America, you guys have like, you know, you have a lot more and everyone's specific about their coffees, right? It's a little ridiculous here, yeah. Yeah, it's not it's really like that. Right? It's just coffee and milk or an espresso. I mean, usually I drink a like a cappuccino or a latte. Yeah. Semi-universal. It's funny, I keep leaning forward to talk. Why don't I just do this? There we go. <laughs> that works better. Uh, now, what's your motivation every day when you know to get up and go skating? Like, what motivates you? Uh, man, I I just I just love it. I can't explain how much I love rollerblading. To do it, I, I love it more than anything. It's anything I know. It's the only thing I know. So my motivation is like, I don't know, man. I don't know how to explain it. It's just it's just what I do. It's like what I love to do more than anything. You know, I don't have more fun than anything on the planet than being out with my camera. Sometimes alone. I can be out alone for like seven hours filming and I'm having the best time of my life. I absolutely love getting clips and I love to make them perfect. I love to like get home and look through the clips. You know, I love that. I love to do that, man. And I love to like edit my clips and stuff like that and like put it online and you know, you, everyone does it. Everyone's like checking the likes and stuff. Everyone's at it. So, you know, I love, I just love skating, man, more than anything. So that's my motivation and it's, it's all I know. So yeah, I'm just like a, a true, I have true passion for this. That's beautiful. But I can't really explain. It's hard to explain my motivation, man, other than just the love that I have for rollerblading. You know, I absolutely love it. And what do you love what is it about rollerblading that's love that you love so much that's kept you in it for so long? Ooh, you're smacking the questions, bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's almost a similar question, right? What? Yeah. Ask me again. Sorry. What is it about rollerblading that's kept me doing it for so long? Right. I can't do anything else. <laughs> I put all my I put all my heart and soul into this, so I'm going to keep doing it for as long as I can. And you have a lot of there's a lot of skaters that you know look have looked up to you and look up to you, you know, shout out for that. skating and urban skating. What do you have to say to them? Like any words of advice? Um, you know, a lot of them probably want to be like you, you know, become a pro or you know, get to your level. Do you have any words of advice for those skaters out there? Yeah, I would say like um just do it, you know, as much as you can, like um my advice would be i can just tell you you know you've heard my story about how i did it if you're passionate about something then i believe you should you should continue it you know you should follow that through like don't ever give up don't let anyone ever stand in your way you know don't don't let anyone tell you you can't do something you know you're you're in charge of yourself and if you believe in yourself you can get there man so don't you know don't listen to other people just just focus on yourself that's all i can say because that's all i did I've lost, you know, I've lost so many jobs. I've lost friends. I've lost this and that. And I wouldn't let anything stop me. You know, I used to have jobs where they used to try to make you train to do different things, like to how to run a program and stuff like that. And you know what used to happen? I used to get scared that I'm slowly moving away from rollerblading. So companies would try to like help me with training how to use a program. And I would, when the guy came in to teach me, I would lie to him and say, I'm actually leaving next week. So you don't have to do this. You can, you can tell the boss that you taught me, you get paid and uh, you leave. And I, you know, we just have an hour of nothing. So I used to get like, like super scared that I'm, I'm going to get this new job and I'm going to like 
be good at it and have no time for skating. So I quit it and I got sacked. And I've been sacked from about like not good jobs. You know, I've worked at pet shops. I've worked at KFC. I've done whatever I can to just support myself skating. And, you know, I've never let anyone get in the way of that, man. I've never let anyone tell me any different. I've just had this like tunnel vision. Just go skate, you know, go and do what you do. Don't don't worry about the rest. Is that good? That's, that's good. It's good. It? Yeah, no. I think so. I mean, you know, we've both been in it for so long. Yeah, man. There's a passion. We love it. And yeah. what's your plans going into the future? Like what's what's I know this year is a recovery, but you're know, going into 2023. Do you have any like plans? I know you had mentioned maybe maybe locating someplace else, but, you know, within your skating. Any future goals, plans? Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm not really sure. Like after the knee injury, I have to see how this goes because, um, you know, I don't know how strong it's going to be after. But like, definitely going to do more more big wheel stuff like that to just you know calm it down a bit in my later years. But uh, aggressive is my passion, so I'll never stop that. Um, I think whatever I do or whatever I'll be doing in later years, it'll still be the same. But it might not be as heck. It might not be as like crazy. You know, I might not be jumping off things as high as I normally do. I might not be doing crazier tricks than I used to. But I'll mm. definitely still be doing the same thing. And then, like, I'm. I, I really love filming, so I'll definitely like swing into that at some point. You know, slowly merge myself. So, say, say tomorrow for some reason I couldn't skate ever again, I would just pick up the camera and try something through that. I guess. But yeah. I this passion that I have will never leave, you know, so I'll, I'm saying that now that I'm going to slow down. I won't. Right. I'll be still out there again, man. Fakie 720 and off roofs for sure. And I, until the day that that stops, then I'll worry about my future then, you right. know, because I don't really have a backup plan or anything like that. Like I said, I'm just like full on this. So I, it's not like I have good grades from school or I've had some kind of something to fall back on. There's absolutely nothing, but like, I guess I should, you know, maybe like you can always go back to university and stuff, right? It's never too old for that. I can always do that after. So I always just... start saving some of your pro wheels and pro skates and then selling them in 10 years to collectors. Well, that's if people start buying them. There's loads left. Come on, people. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm I'm a lot more grown up than I used to be, you know. And now now that we got like a good we're getting good payments from royalties and stuff like that, that's definitely helping me to grow up. So I'm saving. I am saving. I'm not like spending money. I'm, I'm thinking a bit ahead, which is a good sign. Yeah. I've never done that. So I am thinking ahead now. I mean, even when skaters were making a lot of money, you know, back in the early 2000s, uh, late 90s. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. Young, and they were just blowing it. Mm. And a couple of people, you know, put their money back, like Aragon and Haffy. You know, they did really good, like, winning contests and, like, actually saving the money and putting it in the bank. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a very clever thing to do, man. It, and, it, you know, it, and but, you know, learning that with age is good. Some people, you know, still don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're still doing the same thing, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah. worth thinking about for my future. Like I said, I never really, I'm not really that good at planning, man. I just go with the flow. That's my life. So, but yeah, I'm getting to the age now where like, especially after the injury, I've had a lot of time to think. Normally it's all systems go and I'm nonstop, but now I've had a lot of time to just sit back and think about things that I am thinking more, definitely thinking more about the future a little bit. So a awesome. little, not too much. So I've got a couple more questions for you oh, from my list. And I wanted to say to everybody watching this in the live chat, if there's any questions you have for Nick, go ahead and post those. And when I'm done with my questions, we'll scroll through and try to answer some of your questions. Is anyone even watching? <laughs> there's, we've got uh, right now there's 32 people watching live. Hey, what's so up? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us. What was, what was that, Nick? Sorry, I cut you off. No, I was just talking rubbish. <laughs> so one question I have is, is there any new Nick Lomax Pro products coming out in the near future? I know you just had your skate. Is there any wheels or anything like that in the works? I can't tell you, mate. Can't tell you. You're going to have to wait and see. All right. No, no, uh, 
no uh, sneak previews for us here, huh? <laughs> no, Can you tell us that. a new undercover line? Go, over there is a bunch of stuff that if I showed you, it'd go nuts, but I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> All right. Then the brand, I don't even know how to pronounce it properly. The shirt you all wear, uh, Pum Pumalo? Pumalo. So, Pumalo, who's behind that brand? Yeah, he's a good friend of mine called Carl Baker. Carl Baker, all right. So, oh. anyway, Carl Baker asks, how was he forced to create the brand by you? Uh, <laughs> well, man, Carl, me and Carl go, like, we go way back. He was, he was one of the guys that, like, growing up, me and my Manchester crew, we went down to his area one time to skate and hang out. You know, you, you always used to do trips like that and go meet other skaters. Him and Dan McLaren. I don't know if you know that name. I've known a name. I can't put a face to it, though. He's an old, like, a Razor skater from back in the okay. day. Okay, yeah. So, we like, I've known him for a very long time, and he's, he's a really, really cool guy. And um, he'd always just hit me up with, like, ideas and stuff like that for his new company and send me really cool stuff. And I was always like, come on, man, you know, make it happen. But I had a sponsor at the time, so I couldn't really, you know, commit to it. So I just told him one day, I was like, bro, if you do this, you know, I'll quit my sponsor now and uh, we make it happen, you know? So he did, he did the thing. So yeah, really cool, man. Made it start. Shout out to Pomelo. That's really cool. Um, I actually had a shirt for momentarily. I had one of those shirts because Chris Peel left his shirt in my car when I was at Blading Cup. Of course, he was a size small, and I'm not a size small, so yeah. it didn't fit. So I had to send it back to him. But use it as a tea towel, <laughs> right? So okay, we're about to get. Cal, Cal is like he's he's a hilarious guy, man. He's really really funny. He has one of those English sense of humors that's super dry, and I absolutely love that. You can never tell when he's being serious. And I really enjoy working with people that I get along with, you know, like Matthias and like Cal. So, yeah. Awesome. So we're going to go into questions. I'm going to do a little spiel before we do that. I oh, want to no. say that if you enjoy this channel and you want to support it, I do have a Patreon page. I have a link in the description below, but it's just patreon.com slash And I also have the now blading merchandise. So I have. Well, where's it at? A little cup with me on it, coffee mug. That's all. Yo, one and on some big wheel blades. Can I get one for free? <laughs> I can hook you up with one. Just yeah, boy. Your address, and uh, and I have t-shirts and hats and all sorts of stuff, and that is on the Den and Albating website. And I have links to all my social media in the description below. I have links to Nick's social media in the description below. So you can follow him on Instagram and YouTube and support everything that he's been doing. I have links to sponsors, links to buy his skates. So yeah, it should be pretty cool. So we're going to get into questions now that we have from people. I'm going to start from the very beginning. And uh, I will mention one last thing. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do hit the like button if you enjoy this video. All right. Ollie Bennett asks, Nick, did you finish with that rash cream? Again, <laughs> English sense of humor. Yes, I did. <laughs> and then he said he had to retract his question because not everyone gets it, and he didn't retract it. All right. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Is uh would you consider is Ali Bennett your a uh, your boss for and him? <laughs> I have to work with him, mate. So it's stuff like that where you have to put up with. Do you know what I mean? How how much input do you have on design of skates and products? Hundred percent, man. If it's my product, I I design the whole thing. So I know that the the Aeons changed quite a bit from the first you know, versions until now. All right. Okay. Well, that, that, that's a little bit of me too. I just give my, uh, I give my advice back and then they go from there. I don't actually like, you know, I'm not too technical with all the stuff like that. I thought uh -huh. you meant like more like pro skate designs. I, I yeah, design pro skate designs as well, you know, mm, I design my pro skates, but I, I'm not too into like, you know, the technology of the boot and stuff like that. I kind of, I'm one of those that I, I get what I've given and I skate it, 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very cool. So now we have Javier says, I met this guy at the skate park in Manchester in his comfort zone. I saw tricks I haven't seen before. Pro legend. Can't imagine the things he can do in Barcelona. Not really a question, more of a statement, but. See, but that's better than Ollie Bennett's one. Bloody hell. <laughs> All right. Blitting. Yeah, Ollie, Blitting. That's why. Ollie, stop drinking, mate. Drinking too much, pal. There you go. <laughs> right back at you. Lay off the bottle, Ollie. Blader Manu asks, any tips for commuting with skates? Can't get on any public transportation without a raffle. Um, I'm not sure what a raffle is. Well, like a raffle ticket. I guess. Um, any yeah. tips on commuting on skates? Any tips for commuting with skates? Can't get on any public transport without a raffle. Uh, yeah, man, just skate there. <laughs> <laughs> just skate, yeah, there. skate there. And be careful. I mean, when I yeah, be careful, yeah, take your time. If you see a road, slow down. But I can say that if I do get on a train with my skates, I just keep my liners on. I don't really put the shoes on. Just take take the liners out and walk in them. But I guess it's kind of going to ruin your liners. So right. I'm not really answering the question, but oh, fair enough. That's why you need to get some uh, dupes for commuting. Very true. It's a good commuting skate. Now, Max Power says, I remember when the Nick Lomance... I remember when Nick Lomax went to the hoedown. He was so young, small, and destroying the down ledge and rails. Good. Do you remember your hoedown experiences? I remember it like yesterday, man. Thank you for that, mate. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Uh, I actually went there with Chaz Sands. And uh, he smashed it, man. And I was just super juiced to be there. I don't think I qualified or anything like that, but I, I did really well. Was that your only hoedown you went to, or did you go to more than one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky enough to go to one, man. It was really so wild i was so young too and it was in yeah texas i've never been to america before so it was my first trip to america so that's one i'll never forget man for sure do you remember what year that was no idea no it was when what went down we we'll probably name a trick i mean i don't think Chaz had been to one either so maybe that might I'm curious if i was there too because i went to a few of them you probably would have been yeah that was but amazing different though. everything was big and different and you know I just remember I've got all these like amazing memories from that. Like, like even the drinks in the shop there at the skate park were like big old Gatorades and stuff like that. And it was all just so different and like really, really incredible. The size of drinks in America is outrageous. They're so huge. <laughs> I know. Like what? Who needs that much blue drink? You know what I mean? Can't be yeah. good. People are like, this is the best drink ever. But it's like, it's blue. <laughs> It's I yeah you know, I've noticed just going to like uh so I was in Quebec on Monday and we went to McDonald's just to get a coffee yeah because there's no place else to go and in the U.S. you go to McDonald's you get a, like a large iced coffee it's a huge cup their large is very small but the quality of the coffee is much better right so it's like you have a smaller cup with really good coffee versus a really big cup with really crappy coffee ah uh, stop that man yeah I, I mean like the Seven Eleven ones are terrible right terrible yeah. All right, so we had talked about the Lomax Aeon. Well, sorry, not the Lomax Aeon 80s, but we talked about you skating Aeon 80s, and Daniel says Lomax kills it in the Aeon 80s. So you've got a fan in your Aeon 80s skating. Thank you very much, sir. And then Kevin Zhao clarified where Ali Bennett lives. Ali oh, Conte. Exposed. Exposed. See, I didn't say that, but now, after all these little weird comments, there you go. Now everyone knows where he lives. Nice one, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Bobby Blues wants to know, why don't you skate USD Carbons? Oh, uh, man. It's it's almost like the same as the Sway. It's not that there's anything wrong with them. It's just that I really prefer Aeons, man. And I'm trying to push Aeons. The Aeons like a newer product, you know. So this is my job, man. It's to push that skate. Hmm. But we have people that still skate that carbon. So that's their job. You know, my job's to push the A on. I had a question just popped in my head. How often do you skate with Mary Munoz? All the time, man. Yeah. She's great. I ran into her in Barcelona when I was there, that trip where I hung out with you when I skated with Kevin. I saw her on the street. She said hi to me, but I didn't recognize her. And I kind of ignored her. And then I felt bad about it. Um, but I haven't seen well, her You since. can redeem yourself now. You can say, hello, Mary. Hello, Bye. Mary. Okay. 
I keep looking the wrong way because I'm looking at the screen. I don't know where I am. Yeah, that's a. I really like her new next skate. That that blue next skate she has out. That's right now looks really cool. Yeah, I don't know where that is right now. It must be. And around. that's the AR. Oh, Mary Munoz. She is absolutely amazing. Yeah, she's such a great skater. She's the, honestly, she's the hardest working skater I've ever met in my life, man. Even more harder than me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fully deserved that pro skate, Mary, and congratulations. It's really cool. I'm a bit jealous that you have so many people to collaborate with in Barcelona. So that's the one thing for me. You know, where I'm at, there's no skaters within two hours of me. So I got really lucky having Robert Guerrero in Quebec for a week and we were able to create content and stuff. So like, I yeah. feel like if I lived, you know, if I was doing this now or back in the, if YouTube was around back in early 2000s when I was in San Diego, like it, would public, it would have been awesome. I could have been doing all sorts of content. I and mean, you know, even when I was in Austin, Texas, but out here in Northern Vermont, it's very hard to do in-person things and like to get motivated from other people. I've got an idea for you, Jan. Yeah. You buy a, a Jan buys a van. You get a van, huh? And you move around a bit and go to see these. That doesn't people. work because my name's Jan, not Jan. True, but yeah. <laughs> well, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, John, this is the problem with the van right now. Gas is too expensive. Oh, for God's sake! There's always something in there. You know? well, like I go every time I drive up to Robert. It's I spend sixty dollars in gas. You know, and. Uh, well, you know, I mean, if you start smashing it on YouTube and getting more money because you're every day you're meeting someone new, that should yeah. pay for itself eventually. I, this, I mean, this type of content's not really, uh, I, it's not, people watch it, but not the type of numbers, you know, you need to do something a little bit more interesting. I think, mm -hmm. you know, along the lines of stuff like Tom is doing, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, the comedy aspect and, and informative and brings people from outside of skating into it i'm a little bit more niche with my channel you know niche. and uh so niche. moving on to the next question who wins in a foot race mvg or mk from kevin chow what does that even mean foot race i have no idea kevin clarify it and we'll get back to your question later uh, uh just answer now mk because he's a speed skater so Oh, All but right, if, what, what, just running. Now, speaking of MK, Matthias asks, is it true your boss is a dig? I don't even know what half I don't know what that means. Big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? I have no idea. Maybe Matthias can clarify as well. We've got a lot of confusing questions. I think everyone's drinking their Tuesday sangrias. Everyone's wasted on it, aren't they? But big shout out to Matthias if he's watching. I didn't know he was watching, actually. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I love Power Slide. <laughs> oh, but shout out to Matthias. He's awesome. Best and I also did an interview with Matthias on this podcast, and it's very cool, very informative. You find out everything you want to know about Power Slide, Disroyal, Matthias' history in the sport. Very cool guy, and it's a very it's one of my favorite interviews. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure and check it out on this channel. Um, hi from Switzerland. Hi from Germany. Hi from Vermont. What's up? Next up, full bongo. <laughs> I like your name. What <laughs> trick did you call by a wrong name for the longest? Uh, who knows that? Does someone know that? Because I've told this before to somebody. Uh, Father Nugan. Wait, what trick did you call by a wrong name for the longest? Yeah, Father Nugan, back to the guy that taught me how to skate, David. Before we'd seen a video, we'd heard about a Father Nugan because there used to be this book in school that we had that had, it was actually Matt King. Do you know that name? He yeah, was Matt, Matt King. Yeah. Yeah, I know Matt King. I skate, actually stayed with him in 1999 when I was in England. Really? Yeah, no way. Yeah. So there was a book with a load of trick names in there. And my friend was telling me that it, that was wrong and that a father Nugan was a load of different variations in one. So when I was growing up, I thought a father Nugan was like the hardest multi trick that you could possibly do. I didn't know that it was just two feet and bend. You know, it was like, do, 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 and that's how you do a father Nugan. Right. I feel like, did I even, what trick did you call by a wrong name for the longest? I guess, yeah, that. Uh, let me think about another one real quick. 
Oh, I'm not too sure. Like, yeah, uh, I guess that one. We'll leave it there. All right. Next question from Chalk Knees. Best favorite UK street spot? Ooh. Best favorite UK street spot. Oh, man. Uh, I'd definitely say Castlefields in Manchester because that's where I grew up and that's where it wasn't that it was the best spot, but it's the best memories because that's where all my Manchester friends used to meet in the morning. And we'd pretty much, we'd say we're going skating all day, but we'd end up staying there for hours. We would go skating eventually, but there's a place, I mean, you might have seen it. It's like a, a stadium looking thing with these white big steps. And then in the middle, there's a pretty steep down chrome rail. And above it is this like big canopy that stops the rain from falling. Okay. And then um, in front of that is a, a like a canal river. So I don't know if, if anyone knows that. And Castlefields in Manchester, that's definitely one of my favorite spots just because I spent so much time there. I went past it actually on the train last week when I was on my way to Power Slide. And every time I go by on the train, I'm just like, I move seats on the train just so I can see it when I go by. And you can't see it through the window. I have to stand up and I'm like, there it is, Castlefields. No rollerbladers are there anymore. I'm going to have to look it up online, see if I can find it on Google Maps. Like Castlefields, Manchester, and you'll find it. All right, Kevin Chow again. Love you both <laughs> and hearing you talk about all the things. Well, we love you too, Kevin. Or at least I love you. Nick, do you love Kevin too? I bloody love Kevin Chow. He's a legend. Shout out to Kevin. Hope you're well, mate. And Kevin lives in Toronto, which is actually not too far from me. And I've wanted to visit him, but obviously with COVID, the border has been closed for a couple of years. Now it's open again. Really? I was planning on going to Toronto, but now gas is so expensive. So there's always something happening with making my traveling not fun or affordable right now. All right. Punk's World hashtags both us. Punk's World, thanks for watching. Punk's World has watched several videos in the live chat, including the unboxing of your skate last night. Nice. Um, okay. Blue Up Bobby Blues asks the same question. Why don't you skate USC Carbons? We did that. Any plans to move over to Gods? No. No plans to move to Gods. Why Why would I do that? You know? I have no idea. But Bobby My, Blue. I was like at USC, so that's where I stay. Mm-hmm. I've been I mean, there for been 17 years. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just like abandon ship, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. I'll stay with USD as long as they make skates. Which is probably going to be forever. Exactly. So that's why I stay. Um, Lander, what's your favorite reggae song band? Or whatever song in whatever genre? Uh, I, I just listen to drum and bass. I love drum and bass. Gets me going, gets me excited to skate. You know, it gets my like, gets my hands sweaty and I get all like, I start planning sections in my head. When I, whenever I hear any drum and bass, I get excited. So that's what I'm into. Is Ollie Bennett your favorite drum and bass DJ? No, worst. <laughs> do you go to any festivals or anything like that? No, I don't, I don't, I don't do anything than skate really. I mean, I don't have many other hobbies outside of skating and stuff like that. I mean, I've been to some stuff like that. I used to go when I was younger in Manchester. There was loads of like raves and stuff like that that I used to go to. Some of them were like illegal raves in the middle of a forest. Mm -hmm. That was cool. You, you'd get out the car two miles away from the where they're doing it. And as you're slowly walking through a forest, you start to hear it like, you know, from miles away. That, that was pretty cool. That's pretty rad. But that was back in the day, man. I, I, I really don't do things like that anymore. I might go to the cinema or something like that every now and again or... You know, but, I used to have some raves like that in Austin, but underneath like the, the interstate overpasses where it'd be like yeah. just like tunnels and stuff. And in San Diego, they used to have these like punk shows in like sewage tunnels, basically, or drainage, drainage tunnels. That can't Not be sewage, healthy. Drainage tunnels, um, which were pretty cool. Yeah. Now, Punk's World again. Subscribe and like. <laughs> Thank you for telling everybody to subscribe and like. So yeah, make sure and subscribe to this channel and like this video and leave a comment. Is that you comment. typing that? Is that you typing that, yeah? No, I don't have a, I don't have two accounts going. Okay, back to Kevin Chow. He's a VIP on this. What are some of the favorite memories from THC? The homie crew. Oh man, all of them. 
such a cool crew. Some of the fa funny memories are like, um, oh, I don't know, it's hard. It's like, again, it's all a bit of a big blur. You know, you're asking about a, a five year friendship of a group of guys that used to hang out together. So I, it's, it's, it's hard, maybe not five years, three years, but it's hard to point out one, I guess. I don't know, man. Just all the boys out together skating. All my all my old crew in Barcelona was priceless. It was great. But it's hard. Like, it's hard to, you know, people are forgetting how long I've been doing this. And it's been every single day. So a lot of it is a bit of a blur. You know, I see clips of myself sometimes and go, whoa, you know, I did that. You know, I, I don't even remember it. Kind of like that. So how much did the Barcelona scene die after Kevin Chow moved away? loads no one skates anymore kevin when are you coming back when are you coming <laughs> back bro kevin kevin's got some stories from barcelona oh i'm sure he does probably one of them involves me sleep sleeping in his house yeah <laughs> i'm getting beaten up by the police for no reason oh Even i remember away. that yeah that was like a time early on in him living there wasn't that in the shadow video yeah i believe so Poor guy, should we tell that story? Like, I think it goes like this. Like, someone else was getting kicked off a spot in Barcelona. I think it was uh, Farmer and those guys were getting kicked off. And Kevin just went by and saw everyone and showed up. Like, hey, what's up, guys? And the police just jumped on him and started attacking him because they thought he was the one skating. Such, like, such bad luck. And then they took him to the cash machine. I think, actually, Kevin punched one back because they were beating him up. And he managed to get a punch in on one policeman. And then they marched him to the to the uh, cash machine and they took some money off him. And uh, Kevin once told me he was like, it was the best bit of money he's ever spent because he got to punch, punch the policeman. That's funny. I remember hearing that as well. Now, I also heard that skating is like skating is fairly illegal in Barcelona. Is that true or not? And what and what do you and how did the police uh, treat you guys? You have a lot of issues with police and security. I guess, man, it's the same as anywhere. It depends how you are with them, right? Mm -hmm. If you're nice to people and you just hold up your hand and say, all right, we'll stop. Like there's been times where they've come and just been like real mean and made just all sit down and like take your skates off and they're checking all your bags. But I've never had, a, I've never had a huge problem. But there's been times where like we've been coming down a hill the wrong way down the street and a police car like comes whizzing by the wrong way. And then they put the lights on to come back and get us. And we ran off. We managed to get away. It took like 10 minutes to get away from these police because we kept going back up the hill, down some escalators and around. And they kept trying to trick us into like, you know, they thought we were dumb and we didn't know where we were going. So they go around the corner, but we're already down the escalators because we're not stupid. Right. So um, I think if they caught us because we were running away, they would beat us up. But that's only happened like once or twice, you know. And man, they're not that bad. They, mm -hmm. they might take your skates off you, but it depends what you're doing. If you're skitching a car and the police tell you to stop and you keep going, yeah, you're going to get huge trouble, man. But I think that's in any country. You know? Right. I don't think it matters that it's fair. So Kevin just got unlucky. Wrong place, wrong time. Kevin definitely got there unlucky. All right. Bobby Blue has another question. Quite a few USA USA rollers now have their own brands. When will you and Crofty join up to push the UK scene? I know you're not really on it at the moment, as you said. Hold up a minute. Quite a few USA rollers now have their own brands. When will you and Crofty join up to push the UK scene? I know you're not really on it at the minute, as you said. Well, I mean, I do want to go back and push the UK scene, so... You know, I don't know about a brand. I, I'm I'm happy where I am, but uh, yeah, I want to start to go to like contests and stuff like that, and like you know, get a bit in a bit more involved in the scene in the UK. Like, uh, go to as much stuff as I can. But yeah, I'm 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 quite happy where I am, man. I'm quite happy in Barca, just doing my stuff. So, but yeah, I do I do want to make it happen. But you know, it it's also time for other people to start doing things too, right? Mm -hmm. I've been in the UK scene for so many years. I don't know. If people forget that I used to live there, I was at every single contest for like years and years and years. So, you know, I, it was just time to move away. So, well, you know, there's a lot of people who skate and there's a lot of people who talk about doing stuff, but there's very few people who actually make things happen. 
Mm. You know, more people yeah. stepped up and did stuff, you know, it would help the sport grow quite a bit. Now, have you ever thought about like owning your own brand in the future? I've thought about doing merch, but that's about it, you know. I've thought about making some merchandise and stuff like mm. that. But again, I'm always so busy making videos that I don't really have time and I'm not really a good drawer. So my logo would be terrible. And then if I'm you sure want you to can find someone to help you. I know you could find someone, but then you have to pay and stuff like that. And then if right. you get to be successful, they're going to be like, well, you need to pay me more. And, you know, so then things start happening and you just start getting like, just keep stick to what I know. You know what I mean? Well, you know, there's all those options, though, if you decide to go that route. And if you do and you need help, let me know. I'll uh, give you some advice that I can offer. Um, Kevin Chow again. Question monster. Who are the up and coming skaters in USD Power Slide? Oh, man. Well, there's loads right now, right? There's like, there's all the young guys like uh, Michael Witzman, Jay Yoon. Those guys are like really coming up. There's the, is he called Danilio from Brazil? Mm -hmm. He's coming up hard, man. He's, he reminds me of me from back in the day, you know, like really, you, you can see that that kid has a, a true passion and that he will be incredible one day. So, yeah, look out for those guys. Have you been in touch with that kid? No, I've not actually. No, I'm, I'm not really part of, I don't really go on social media that much these days. I literally post things and I'm off. And, you know, if you if you spend your day looking through other people's things, if you're following more than a thousand people, you, you end up just sitting on your phone for half an hour doing this. And then right. I just unfollowed everyone. So now I just follow my sponsors. So I don't follow anyone now. So I don't really go on Instagram and see these, these things. And sometimes things pop up. Yeah. And I just click like or something like that. But other than that's that, how, that's how Robert Guerrero's Instagram is. If you look at his, he's got like 7,000 followers and zero and he's following zero people. It's the best way, man, for me, because like, I don't want to, I don't want to like be too, I don't want to see so much what everyone else is doing. You know, I just want to kind of concentrate on myself and worry about what, what you know what i've got to do and i don't want any distractions so i i just don't i do it for that and i follow my sponsors obviously because you know i want to i want them on my page so cool all right next one max power i went to the bar with chaz sands jeremy spire and reyna at that hoedown uh, uh that sounds like a good time they were probably all very drunk especially back then when they were young you wouldn't have seen me there i didn't drink till i was like 21 i don't think i was drinking i'd have probably been in the hotel room like not being able to sleep because there was a contest or something like that all right jojo or yo yo not sure which how you pronounce it says by the way yon buys a van still works <laughs> okay will you be going to winter clash next year yes finally i'm coming back I plan on, well, I hopefully plan on going as well. Uh, it all depends on really how, if flights get more expensive or not. Um, but my plan is to go to Winter Clash as well. So I hope to see you there in person. And you know what? I just want to give a massive shout out to everyone that like, I can't wait to come and see everyone and just hang out and do a little bit of skating and do a little bit of chatting with everyone. You know, I've kind of missed our world when you when you have something taken away like winter clash it's so incredible you then you really miss it you know like i like i said i didn't go to the last few because it's a bit overwhelming as a pro when you go there but i don't care anymore i really miss it i really miss all the bladers and i miss our like our world so i'm mm -hmm. coming there and i can't wait to see everyone for sure I'm, i mean i don't have experience being there as a pro but i definitely feel it's overwhelming being there regardless <laughs> especially when you know a lot of people because everyone's just talking to you and it's like but you it's actually, Europe. you know like yeah. not as a skater you don't actually i don't ever actually watch the skating because i'm i can't walk two feet without people talking to you yeah yeah what so, makes me laugh about winter clash is the corridor at the top where it's dead small mm -hmm. every single person that's been to winter clash knows what i'm talking about where you have these little small like awkward conversations when you're like Hey, I'm not seeing you for it. How are you? Yeah, you're good. All right, I'll catch up with you later. You won't because it's massive and you probably won't see each other again. But you're like, well, have a beer. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that kind of bums me out about those events is because there's a lot of people there that I I like 
and I've known forever, and I actually want to spend time with, but you really can't spend time with them. Yeah. You know? Um. So, okay, Launder, thank you for your five dollars support. Now, there's a skater, Skate Sam Ghana. He's a big fan of yours. Um, yeah. Yeah, he lives in Ghana. He has a YouTube channel as well. I'll go ahead and link Skate Sam Ghana's YouTube channel in the description below after this video is posted uh, so people can check out his YouTube channel as well. But he's a big fan of yours. And you want to give a shout out to Sam? Massive shout out to everyone skating in Ghana. Uh, big respect. I'm glad that you follow me. And um, now that it, now that this has come up, I'm going to check the link as well. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys some support on your page. So much respect, guys. Awesome. Yeah, I'll go ahead and personally send you the link to his YouTube channel so you can check it out. And okay. he's a real nice guy. He follows all these videos, all his content, very positive. And awesome. I have, I've been you know, very busy as well, like you say you are. So it's hard to do everything I want to do. But I definitely would like to do something with him in the future to talk about skating yeah. in Ghana and, you know, and some more around greater Africa as well. So yeah. I know that yeah, there's a lot to you guys, man. Thank you for the support, guys. And thank you for, like, you know, getting involved, asking questions here. So thank you. And he also is doing both. He's mainly free skates, but he's also been dabbling into aggressive skating as well. So he's doing them both, which is really cool. And I like to see that. Man, that's the way, you know, that's like me. Now, Matthias. Misspelled. Sorry, but Big Brother is watching. Uh-oh. <laughs> Big trouble. He's probably here somewhere. And then Tom, I nearly got run over by a man, Mandy Dingle near Castle Fields. <laughs> What's the Mandy Dingle? I've no idea, but yeah, almost got run out. Mandy Dingle. <laughs> I have no idea. What I mean. uh, yeah. That's funny. Um, and Megan Mayo, thank you for your support with the super sticker. Thank and. You. Kevin Chow wants to know, has the Bolton skate park got a gate so pedestrians can't walk through it anymore? Yeah, they do. They've they there was a skate park in my hometown that was pretty it was very stupid. They put one gate on one side and another gate on the other side, so that like there was a big shopping mall over the other side. So people, instead of walking around the skate park, it's just a lot less time to just walk straight through the middle. So you'll be having a session and an old lady with like shopping bags will be walking through the skate park. That's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So I, I made a joke about it on Instagram and I started, I was like having a session and started filming people walking by with their shopping. And then, yeah, they, they, um, the newspaper hit me up the day after that because the video got loads of views and, um, my Bolton evening news hit me up and they were like, Hey, can we do a little interview with you? So I was like, yeah, for sure. So I, I answered some questions from them. And then sure enough, the, the the council heard it, the government heard it, and they took out one of the gates. So now no one walks through it anymore. Wow, that's think, really cool. Yeah, I think there's another gate, but it's not like you. there's no point in going through it because they're both kind of next to each other. Mm -hmm. So they removed one from there and just put it like this. Okay. So yeah, job well done. Awesome. Look at that. Just a, a little bit of effort went a long way on that. I mean, I didn't plan it. I was literally just like making fun of it because it was right. hilarious. Well, had you not done that, you used to have people walking through. Funky, and you look behind and you sm and smack into someone, you'll probably get in trouble for it. You know, uh -huh. you probably somehow you might you might bang someone up. So you might like, I don't know. So, yeah. All right, Tom is back with a question. What's the best options from Greg's to keep you skating all day? <laughs> uh, I, I, I tell you what I have is a steak bake and a sausage roll. You're good to go, man. You've got you've got hours of skating there. And a coffee now, too. But, uh, man, the price has changed. I was there recently, and it wasn't like it was when I was a kid. It was like two quid for a sausage roll now. So, yeah, that, that's one of my best foods ever. I love that. Start my day with that every day. That sounds good. I, the problem I had when I was eating in England and UK is like a lot of food's very heavy and like greasy and fried and yeah, doesn't got, seem like it goes very well with skating. No, we got terrible food. Yeah, I mean the, the the place that Tom's talking about, Greg's, is exactly the same. But 
Oh, it's just so tasty. And it's it's a bakery that's just got fresh bakery baked foods there ready to go all day long. So it's something that I cannot pass by that shop without buying. Steak bacon, sausage roll, mate. <laughs> and Tom's got one more. Are you still up filming? Are you still up for filming video parts or fully focused on social media bits? Yeah, good question. I, I'm super that if if I had the opportunity, I would definitely make a, a, a section again or a video. It's just like, mm, I don't know. It seems like it's harder these days to get someone to film you. It, I feel like, you know, everyone's doing it as a job now, right? And especially everyone I know. So it's it's a bit more pricey to get a section film these days. Unless you make like a VOD or something. But I mean, they're kind of a thing of the past now, right? No one's really doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely up for making a section. Like I said, I'm, I'm filming here every day with Rafa, the new filmer guy here. And me and him have been discussing about making some making some good stuff because it works perfect that he works for Power Slide. Do you know what I mean? So me and him, if me and him hang out together, it's like we're both technically working. So we really want to start pushing that now. And we're going to definitely start making making some things happen. It's a shame that I can't skate whilst I'm here now because we, we would have been cracking on already. But yeah, I'm, I'm, long are you there for? I'm not too sure, actually, man. Like, I might be here till the end of the month. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't tell you before, but like, I don't actually have an apartment in Barcelona anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just kind of like, I went to England just to not be under anybody's feet. You know what I mean? Just to like relax there and not be under anyone's feet. So then I came to Power Slide to do the kind of, not to just live rent free, but to like push skating and do a load of work that you know I wouldn't been able to do because it's because I don't skate. So I um, when I go back, I'll have to sort somewhere out. But and who but, are you yeah. staying with there? Sorry? Who are you staying with now? I'm staying with my girl now. But um, you know, she lives with some other girls too. So I'm kind of like under under the feet. So I just kind of right. like yeah, I got away for a bit. So I'm and gonna in, go uh, sorry, and and in Germany, who are you staying with right now? I'm staying at the power slide warehouse. Who's at the warehouse, okay. They have like yeah, a bed there you can stay at. Yeah, we got apartments over in the back, so I'm staying. Oh, there. sick! A really nice apartment too. It's pretty much better than my house. <laughs> my old. I, I, I try to, you know, ask Matthias about when he's going to build a skate park at Powerside. Yeah, he was talking about that the other day, man. Oh, really? Maybe that might actually happen. Yeah, um, but he was waiting for the guy. There's, there's a, basically another business on top. Uh huh. So he's kind of just holding out until like. You know they move out and then he'll take it somehow i mean they've got a tiny skate park over there too there's everything here man there's a gym there's there's loads of stuff so they got a few little rails outside of the front a little bit so like little ramps and stuff like that nice yeah i visited there oh about four years ago and i was really sick so i just kind of hung out in the hotel and then had lunch with matthias but i definitely Don't need to make it back out there you just didn't want to hang out, didn't you? Oh, I'm sick, man. Oh, dude, it was the sickest. It was like a post-winter clash sickness. It's the sickest I've ever been. I was supposed to spend like six more weeks in Europe, and I ended up leaving like two weeks early, and I was sick the whole time after winter clash. I was going to go uh, to hang out with Chad Sands. He was we going to go to uh, um, the Owl of Sky and drive around there and stuff, and that didn't happen, so kind of a bummer. But it's the sickest. I'm definitely the sickest I've ever been. All right, looks like we got one last question from Jacob Pauly. And his question is, advice for upcoming skaters with no connections on how to find their place or get sponsored? Mm. Well, I mean, I can tell you that, like, for me, I never tried to be sponsored. I never – I wasn't sending messages or – I wasn't trying to like get sponsored, you know, it, it just kind of happened because I was so focused on skating. So my advice would be be productive, you know, and skate as much as you can. And eventually you will get seen. You will get picked up by a sponsor. There's no reason why it shouldn't happen to you like it did to me. So my advice to people when they ask me about how to get like sponsored, wait, but it says how to find their place. I mean, if you love skating, you're already in the right place. And if you have a passion for it, you'll get sponsored, you know, because you'll get great at it. You know, if, you, if you're passionate about something, I fully believe that you will be great at it. And if you have that true passion inside you, 
then people will be sending you tons of emails one day. They'll be emailing you. All you have to do is absolutely smash it. Be productive. Get on social media. Get an iPhone or get any phone and start posting clips. That's how that's it starts there. That's exactly where it starts is just stay productive and, you know, stay passionate. And it's changed a lot since your early days of skating. You know, there wasn't a social media. You know, yeah. there's magazines and there's magazines, videos. Videos and stuff. And now so, it's, you know, you got Instagram and, and YouTube. So it's a lot easier to get your name out there and it'd be seen. But um, then saying that it's not as easy because then there's also uh, all the other people that are trying to do that too. But right. Well, it's easier to promote. I feel like it's easier to promote yourself at least because back in the day you had to be shot by a photographer to be in a magazine or you had to be yeah. like in a, shot by a good filmer to be in the good videos. So you might've been seen by more people because of magazines and stuff, but it was harder yeah. to get in those places. Yeah. Um, and you were, I mean, you were around in the magazine heirs, right? You had photos of magazines. Not just that. I was around when my, like pictures were taken with like, you know, what is it called? Film? Uh, yeah, with film. So it's been that long that like, see, I couldn't even remember what the name was. <laughs> what was the first magazine you had a photo in? U uh, Unity magazine. It was, and uh, what was like, what was that feeling like getting your, you know, being in a print magazine for the first time? Super cool, man. I've still got that magazine. You know, it was great. It was a big kink rail in Bolton from Adam Kohler. I mean, and that started because I was the um, some some guys were heading to Bolton and my friend knew about it. Big Al, shout out to Big Al. He heard that Kohler and everybody were coming to Bolton. So he told me and then, then it was my time to shine. So it wasn't like he was there to meet me. It's just that day I did a sick trick and they got a snap. And it's funny because I didn't know Adam then either. And it was one of those where you buy a magazine and you look through it and you're in it. And it's just like, there was no one telling me you're going to be in it. It's just, you shot a picture and you just hoped that every every issue that you were in it. And yeah, that, that worked out for that. But man, going back to that question, I'd definitely say like, just, just make things happen, you know, surround yourself with other skaters, make a little scene. And believe me, if you're passionate about skating, and you do it like as much as you can and you push, push your own limits, you know, eventually you'll get there. Yeah, that's good words of advice. And um, when's the last time that you went on an aggressive session with a proper skate photographer? Oh, well, I, I shoot with um, Kenneth. Kenneth works for Power Slide too. Mm -hmm. And um, he... I mean, he has all the setup and stuff like that. It's not film, obviously. Right. Yeah. So I'm still doing that. I still take okay. action shots. Yeah. Cool. Very quite cool. Popular, yeah. But it's not like pictures are not as, you know, they're not as uh, effective as clips. So I don't, I don't arrange many photo shoots or anything like that. It's just if we have to shoot some products, you know, or there's a new skate coming out, then we go shoot like that. Have you ever had a photo on a poster? Yeah, man. I had a Yukon one. Oh, nice. Huge one. It was really so that big. was a brand you skated for that was outside of Parasite, right? Yukon? Yeah, true. Yeah, forgot about that. See, it's all a big blur, man. I can hardly remember. But yeah, Yukon was cool, man. Shout out to Dave Bell for that. Dave Bell really, really hooked it up, man. He, that guy's a legend. Awesome. Now, Tom says Mandy Dingle is from Immerdell. <laughs> true <laughs> well you really almost got knocked over by her that's so crazy no way actually that's one, real person. this is so crazy tom's gonna freak out at this one of the dingles that is in emmerdale is a rollerblader he's called joe and he's also in this is england he's the main actor in this is england that guy is a dingle and that guy i used to skate with back in bones bolton he once gave me a lift back home to my parents' house and dropped me off. And in, in later years, sorry, I know this is random for you, Jan, but in later years, I saw Joe in Manchester and I didn't think he'd recognize me. He was a superstar now. Like there was loads of people around him trying to get an autograph. And I was with Big Al and we were like, no way, there he is. And he looked over and saw me and Al and was like, whoa, come here, lads. And like, yeah, he's... He's a really cool guy. So, yeah, one of the dingles is a rollerblader. Crazy That's story. Cool. Yeah. 
Now, Mandy didn't have fun though. Jojo or Yo Yo says we need to get kids on skates. Uh, we need to get skates on kids' feet. And yes, I agree 100%. Um, and, you know, there's not very many brands that have kids aggressive skates. I know USD has it, one, Razors has one, and then there's the Caltic one. Um, and then, you know, you have lots of kids like uh, rec skates and stuff like that. But yeah, it's definitely, what do you, what's, what do you see happening? to get little kids on skates because you definitely want to get children on them. Yeah, man, I'm going to, I've actually been thinking about this quite a lot and I want to, um, <clears throat> I'm not just making this up because we're on a live interview and I'm trying to make everyone go, wow, it's so cool. But I'm going to start giving something back to rollerblading. I want to like, I've never really like, you know, I've just give out content, you know, and I've not always been paid for it. It's not about the money. If I could make just as much money from holding a skate and talking about it, I choose to go out and, and do what I do, but I've never really given much back to rollerblading. So I've learned all this knowledge now, and I've got all these tips that I can give to kids. So I'm now going to start doing free, completely free workshops for anyone, not just kids, but for anyone. I'm going to try and encourage kids to start coming along more, but I really want to start doing workshops in Barcelona or wherever I am. If I'm in England for a week, you know, or in Manchester, I'm going to put out on my social media that on Friday, at Castlefields Arena, where Mandy Dingle's driving around, I'm going to do workshops. So that that is that's something that's going to happen very soon. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking quite a lot about that, man. Yeah, that's cool. I think you know, getting kids. Obviously, we're probably talking about aggressive, but I think getting kids on, you know, urban skates, or whatever. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good way to go. You know, because you get more easily to get more kids on it. They can have a little bit more fun right away. And then eventually they, they're going to want to try more, right? And then yeah, and then they want to do more, like we were when we were kids. You know, you, you want to move on. So I think you push them on a you know a big wheel setup so they can go fast and have fun and skate stairs, and then start trying to get aggressive. And then they yeah. see a grind and say, "What is that?" You know, right. I that. that's what Matthias Nola always told me too. He always said the same thing. So that way, the kids learn how to skate first. You know, so they actually got to skate, then they can go into. Um, tricks but instead of just trying to grind right away and then they can't do it and they quit right away you know like it's let them fantastic. develop a passion and love for skating first i also th always have thought that you know back in the day you know back in the 90s yeah you know, senate for instance a lot of their merchandise their graphics and logos were targeted towards children yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the writers were young you know roadhouse was a kid um so i've always so cool right that it would be really cool to have a brand that is focused towards children. Like all the people on it are kids. You mm -hmm. know, I know icon like their amp teams all out at 18, which is cool, but like actually having a, a brand where everybody on it is between 10 and 16, mm -hmm. you know, everything's targeted towards them with the, the graphics and you make like folders, binders for school and pins and they could show it off. Like I've always thought that that would be a really like cool. swear words on there and stuff like yeah. that. The Things that kids can make. a kids brand get at me, you know. I'll let, I'll give you some of my ideas. <laughs> so, um, right. well, yeah, so, yeah, definitely, definitely going to start doing more workshops, and I, I think that a lot more skaters out there should do the same. You know, I think we should all kind of like, especially if you're at my age now and you have a lot to give back. It'd be it'd be really silly that you never did. You know, you've got all this knowledge up here. Mm -hmm about what to do and you know advice and stuff like that so i think we should all now like especially in such a small sport we should definitely try to like share that knowledge so i'm going to concentrate oh, for on sure that. i mean there's a lot you know it only takes a few people to do that too to make it an impact yeah you know, but, um it's like when i was doing you know organizing group skates in austin you know it was just me organizing skates and you know having them happen every week but I dedicated myself to doing it. And when I left, they all kind of died, you know, because no one else wanted to step up and organize them. Yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah, one yeah. person doing it and then that person's gone and like the whole scene pretty much dies. Yeah, so man. I know you're you getting more people involved. Um, all right. Tom really liked the Dingle story. I knew you would. <laughs> and then Jacob says, great response. Thank you so much, Nick and Jan, for this interview. Thank you, no, no. Jacob, for watching. Really appreciate it. Bonder yeah, wants to know, can we get a funny story? Any story? Um, 
once upon a time, <laughs> I don't know, what's a funny story from me. Yeah, um, he has something funny. It's pretty hard when he's live. I mean, I don't know if I if I'd have been asked that question an hour ago, I'd have had time to write it down and think of something. But <laughs> um, let me have a little thing. A funny story. Um, God, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I where do you start? Uh, Under pressure. Not pressure, but I just can't think about it. Funny story. <laughs> I mean. I haven't really, I haven't done that much recently, so I don't know what to tell you recently. Uh, well, we can uh, get back to that if you think of anything but at the very end, then you can go back to that one. I'll keep it ticking at the back of my mind whilst I'm answering the last one. Um, and then Metric says, love that. Incredibly important to get the kids on skates, for sure. And then Full Bongo says he would donate to a fund for free skate workshops. And that would be really cool. That's another thing. It's just getting people together to create a fund to create a workshop to create an organization you really need an organization with people who invest their time because it's you know all these things they don't make money so it's like you got to find people who are willing to invest their time to help the sport and not like make money you know and there's people who do that you know well, you don't need to it's the knowledge that we have as professionals for so long is priceless mm -hmm. right? right so you technically don't need money to do a workshop no you i mean just you know some of the workshops, but I feel like for a workshops, for instance, you know, it would be nice to have sk provide skates, right? So oh, yeah, you yeah. do you have workshops for kids who just bought skates, sure, or you yeah. do workshops for people who have never skated before to get them into skates. For if you're going to do that, then you're going to have to have inventory of skates and stuff like that, you know. Uh, so it depends on how you do it. One thing I will say, I found interesting. There's that brand, uh, Flying Eagle, um, from China. They have. Uh, retail stores and malls all over China. So every store has a skating rink in it. And when you buy skates, you get lessons at the shop. That's pretty cool. Which yeah. is a pretty good, cool uh, thing they do. And and uh, it's pretty crazy how big they are in China, you know, and they do a lot of, and mainly, they mainly do stuff with kids. So to answer the kids question, you do have some brands like Fine Eagle really pushing children, but it's just in China, you know, not like any, it's not happening anywhere else. I mean, uh, no, I'm think I'm pretty sure that was happening somewhere I've been to, maybe. But yeah, yeah that's a good idea. And full bongo, cheers for your donation, man. If that ever comes around and, you know, that ever happens, then I, I would fully appreciate it. But the, all the money would obviously go to, like, like you say, like kids skates or even transportation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Or even getting what would be really cool is getting to an area where, like, kids can't get skates. Do you know what I mean? Where like, yeah. You know, one thing I don't know how it works in Spain, but you know, in the U.S., if you were to try to do something like that, you know, you probably have to get like liability insurance. So that's you know an added cost because if a kid hurts themselves, you don't want the parents to sue you, mm. right? So it's like you know, yeah. it might sound easier in some places. You know, it's obviously it's different country to country. Every it's, city, it's, every yeah, now, that, now that you mention it, so a budget a budget could help with stuff like that. You know. Mm -hmm. what I mean? All right, and then JoJo contributed nine dollars and nine cents. Thank you, sir. Uh, Full bongo. Youth hockey is already a huge thing. So many places it can't be that hard to sell to get them on wheels. Now, youth hockey, uh, as far as ice hockey goes, it surprises me because here in Vermont, ice hockey is huge. I mean, huge. Everybody plays it, but none of the hockey rinks are four seasons they're only like winter time so it's like hockey players don't skate in the summer and they don't roll wood so it's like it seems like it'd be a national you know natural like progression to at least do roller hockey in the summer but they don't and roller hockey was really big when i grew up that's how a lot of the guys i knew got into it um so i feel like i just don't feel like uh i don't know for some reason there's a definitely not a connection between hockey and roll and inline skating um in most places what about you i mean is hockey something that that's big where you're from no not at all so yeah, it's, you know, it's I, like it's, not, it's also not big in a lot of places it's big you know in the northern areas of the u.s canada i don't um, know much about that um i guess it 
I guess some of them train on rollerblades, right? I'm, I'm sure in in COVID, I saw quite a few hockey skaters that were trapped at home that would put blades on and stuff like that. Yeah, um, I mean, COVID definitely helped with things like that. But in general, you know, without that, they're still not really... They might be more now since people were doing that, you know, and they're pros, so kids might have got inspired to start in, in line skating, but we'll see. Um, all right. And then any plans for the Aeon getting better materials on the soul plate? I don't know if that's like a, it's a one piece soul. You have you don't have any issues with the soul plate, do you? Not at all, no. I, I find I don't know, I find the Aeons perfect as they are. So I'm not too sure about that either. And then Tom asks, Tom is also in the running for most questions along with Kevin. Do you think there should they should introduce a gung tank <laughs> at Winter Clash? I definitely do. I so, what's a gung tank? I think it's one of those things that you stand on a platform. Uh -huh. Like a dunk tank? It disappears and you okay. go in. <laughs> I think that would that's be fun, but it's a winter. It should be outside at winter class. Oh, it should be inside, in front of everybody. Another thing to get the floor more wet on the on the skate park. True, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, just beer is going to be. Uh, Miguel wouldn't be happy. He'd be screaming at people. And we've got Delivery Girl. She's watching. Says I'm involved with a nonprofit social org that does inline workshops for free and will loan skates if you don't have them. Awesome. So you thank you she also says i'm one of the starters of kids but i've taught adults too so amazing good work thank you very much like delivery really girl you could it, contact uh nick on instagram maybe you could send a message and and give him some information i mean right now i mean i can't even skate and i'm not in the place to do it but yeah in yeah. the future yeah I, I can go on my own social media and i can ask for help like that so yeah all right One of the labels we have is that kids can't leave the interplausible without helmets and full protective gear. So yeah, there's a lot to it. I'm not sure where she's at, but it's definitely going to be a lot to take in consideration depending on where you live. Yeah, appreciate that. It's really cool that you're doing that too. I mean, we, you don't have to be so great at skating either to do that. You know, you just have to get people together, get people together, show a few moves and stuff like that. And it says, Yandriol Silverio we talked about wanting to get skates to guys in cuba who can't with embargo so there's definitely a lot of dudes out there thinking like this now as far as getting skates to people i know there's been a lot of you know people getting together and sending skates to you know places in africa and different areas and it's definitely logistic wise it's very hard mm -hmm. um it's you know first of all you have to it's expensive to ship the skates even if they're used and then you have to trust the people you're dealing with on the other end that they're actually going to distribute them properly or not sell them or whatever. So it's like, you have to make sure you work with the right people. And so mm -hmm. there's a lot to it. That's why almost it's like there needs to be a, a nonprofit organization that only deals with that. And anyone who wants to, you know, contribute skates around the world goes through one central body. But well, I mean, I've done that. I did that recently. Like obviously as pros from power slide, we have a lot of like leftover products, right? You know, I've got a lot of wheels in my house and stuff like that. Some of them are just sat there doing nothing. So, yeah, I've, we've sent a few boxes off now. Me and Mary Munoz teamed up and we've been doing that. We're going to probably send a new one in a month to somewhere else because, like, you know, we gave a load of stuff away. So now it's got to build back up and then we'll do the same again, definitely. Actually, shout out to John Julio because he actually um, he hit Mary up. And he helped us pay with the logistics actually when she put out a status like that. So oh sick. Really awesome. cool. Julio was definitely doing a lot. I mean, with that commute community thing too, you know, donating different things like that. Super cool, man. So I really appreciate really that. And they've all hit me up now. Then they hit me and Mary up, like, hey, thank you for your support. And now we sent that last box to Gaza. Mm -hmm. They've just received it now and they're all skating in our skates. And it, it's really beautiful to see, man. So you know, a shout out to anyone out there that does have some spare stuff lying over. You know, you can, there are, there are things out there. Like you can hit up Jason Adriani, hit up that name on Instagram. He's doing really loads. He's the one who uh, actually sent it for us. We sent it to him and then he sent it on. And like you say, it is, it is crazy logistics. 
and it took a long time but you know if you're committed to it it will get there and our box got there so it's really awesome man so shout out to all those guys thank you and jc any plans on teaching skating like a skate instructor now we kind of kind of that's what you were talking about with the workshop right you would teach skating or yes yeah yeah i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it for like a job and uh -huh. you know, do it every week i mean i wouldn't it would just be a workshop wherever i am so it wouldn't be like a setup thing that i'm now an official instructor it would just right. be like, you know if i'm in say i go to a contest somewhere and i'm at a contest like what mary was doing at the uh blading cup you know you go to a contest and you say all right on the friday night before the contest i'm organizing a, a little workshop in the skate park so and you speak to the organization they let you have the park for empty and stuff like that i'm i'm more about doing that than okay. being an actual teacher right yeah. so that is really popular in the quad skating world so that you know i follow a lot of these pro quad skaters and they pretty much support their travels around the world by every town they go to they do a workshop mm. so you know that they charge for uh actually yeah, charge yeah. Workshops. so that's how they travel so you know you could do maybe like workshops for kids for free and then you could do some other ones where you make money you know maybe to help support you a little bit more well, um, like like I said earlier, I, I wouldn't do it for the money. It, mm -hmm. I would do it to pass on my knowledge. That's all, just to give out give out some tips. So, right, I wouldn't become uh, an instructor. No, I would just put on my own workshops. So, delivery girl who said that she does workshops is actually in Barcelona. Yeah, Roic do, do a lot. Yeah, they do every Saturday morning. They do uh, free classes, and literally like two hundred rollerbladers show up. And she's a volunteer. So maybe you've met her before. She lives in Barcelona. Um, and I'm going to, we're going we're gonna to go one last question and then we're going to call the interview. Uh, Cause we've been on here for like a little over two hours. You're getting yeah. bored, mate. Huh? You're getting bored. No, I just, you know, Okay, I'm joking. Like, uh, you know, it's it's getting late there, and and I like to keep them around two hours. Cause then I feel like it just gets too long. Oh, it's been two hours. It's been over two hours what yeah it's been two hours and 16 minutes no oh, way hey, i didn't think i could talk that much i thought yeah, so, I'd like 10 minutes and say all right see you in a bit yeah so it's definitely uh been going pretty good so we're gonna go to tom for his last question do you reckon we should egg people when they miss a trick at winter clash <laughs> no i definitely I, don't i agree because that would just add more crap to the floor <laughs> at the then, skate park then you've got the tank you've got everyone's beers on the floor mm -hmm. and then eggs flying around i mean it would be hilarious but then what's stopping you know what winter clash is like right if someone throws an egg then there's going to be a beer thrown then there's going to be a whole yeah. load of mess going around it almost reminds me of i don't remember if it was it was either a razors video premiere or maybe kfc video adam joss video premiere but it was an escondido and the santee boys damien and nick and jimmy we're hiding in the bushes with BB guns, shooting people as they enter the premiere. <laughs> so it's, you know, similar, I guess. You shoot people with BB guns, they miss a trick. Um, I'm just joking, of course. Imagine that. Now, you know, scary. Right. And we'll sum up the show with Launder's comment. It's been a really good two hours. Great show, gentlemen. Well, I really enjoyed talking to you, Nick. This is Me definitely too, man. It's been really nice. The longest we've ever spoken, like to each other and yeah, we're know. like best mates now maybe i get your phone number after this yeah right have... you know i mean definitely you know we had a, a a short hangout session in uh in barca which was really fun and hopefully i can make it back out there if you're still there we can go blade you can show me some spots and some food places and stuff like that for sure and, uh, thank you for your message yeah it's been really nice so appreciate it so again i want to say i have um let me see. Do, 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 do. I'm going to have links in the description below of all of the things we've talked about in the show, all of Nick's social media, my social media. I links to that. I have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Nick's got Instagram. He's got a Facebook page, and he's got YouTube. And we're just going to skip the TikTok because, you know, we don't need it, right? What do you mean? Oh, we were just talking about how we didn't like the TikTok earlier. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you want to show support for the channel you can become a patreon member i have a link 
to my Patreon page in the descriptions below, as well as a link to my donation page. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I also have done, I also have then and Albating merchandise available. I have coffee mugs with me. I have shirts with this logo. I have shirts with other logos of me, and then just logo t-shirts and all sorts of t-shirts and headwear and all sorts of stuff. So you can check that out on the Den and Albating website. I have a link in the description below. Just like that, link in the description, description below. Uh, I'm getting cotton mouth from sitting in these lights for too long. I know, me too. I got a big light in front of me there and I've had to drink all that water. I've got the driest mouth ever. <laughs> all right, well, hey, Nick, thank you so much for joining me for you episode well. 21 of the Then Now Blade podcast. Like I had said at the beginning, this is the very first live interview I've done. And it was really cool having you on the show for it. I think it worked out pretty well. I hope you had a good time. You too. Hope, uh, you for having me on, Jan. It's been really nice to talk to you, mate. Yeah, thank you. And I hope to see you in in Eindhoven for Winter Clash. Everyone at Winter Clash. Make sure you get your tickets because it's going to be great. It's going to sell out fast too because I've seen a lot of people are just buying tickets just to sell them, to buy them and not knowing if they're actually going to be able to fly out there. So, but then they always come back around, don't they? they they'll be like, Hey, I'm selling it. Yeah. So, but so they, you know, better get on it now than later. And that helps, the, that helps everybody at winter clash actually put this event together to get that money sooner than later as well. So yeah. everyone take care, Nick, take it easy. Say hi yeah, to everybody. Man. Everybody power slide for me. All right. right, will do. See you later guys. Bye-bye.